What is up guys? My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you all how to create a classified ads website with WordPress. A classified ad website is where visitors can come offer services, sell their products, offer free stuff, or even create social gatherings for your community. Believe it or not, I actually found my real estate broker through a Las Vegas classified ad websites. In one specific area, many real estate agents are offering their services and they showcase their commissions. I thought the commission rate was very fair. So in the end, we closed the deal, and to this day, I own my property in Las Vegas. There is a huge demand for classified ad websites. Most neighborhoods actually have their own classified ads websites, but the thing is, many of these are created by amateurs and they don't really look good. So today I'll walk you guys through on how to create a really modern and impressive looking classified ad websites. In this tutorial, you guys will have access to several pre-made templates that look amazing. With these templates, you can simply import them and propagate a modern design for your community. And the best part is we're using a free drag and drop page builder. So anyone that's watching this video can build the same website. So let me walk you guys through the website that we're gonna make today in this video. So here's a classified ad website that we're gonna make today in this video. With this website, you can post classified ads and also allow visitors to post their own ads, services, jobs, or gigs on your website. Overall, the design of this website is modern and unique. You can offer free postings or even paid postings. You can also offer a subscription or memberships where users will have to subscribe in order to post on your website. When a visitor comes to your website, they can search for something. After they search for it, they're then brought to a search page. Here they can view the different classified ads on your website. You can change this to a grid view or a list grid, and they also have a map integration to integrate a map. You can see some of these classified ads are featured and some are regular. You can have users pay to boost their ads for more exposure. Next, here's the classified ad page where users can get more information about the classified. Users can scroll through this picture, see the sellers, get their information, see their contact info, and also add it to their favorites and a lot more. Below that, we can see the title of the classified, the category, the description, and also the features. Your visitors can add as much information as they want. They can also add videos, even attachments to your classified ads. And then the very last section, you can view the location. And then below that, there is even a pricing calculator. And then lastly, there are additional ads that relate to your current classified you are viewing. This helps the user find more relevant services for their search. There was also three different styles on how to present your classifieds. You can do a gallery style, there's also a carousel style where users can scroll through images for a better view or mosaic. And this is just a blend of different options to provide a very unique style for presenting your classifieds. Visitors on your website can also chat with the seller and email them on your website. So let me walk you guys through how users actually post ads on your websites. A user can first click on the post ad at the top right. They can sign up and make an account. You can choose as an admin to let users log in or register or even allow guest posts. Here they can enter in the ad name. They can also add a category, a price, some descriptions, videos, pictures, or even attachments. Once the user has finished creating the ad, you can then offer specific packages. Once the user selects a package, they can click on the next proceed to purchase the package or manage their listings. From the customer portal, the user has all the options at their disposal. They can create new posts, they can view current ads, or even edit them. If a user wants to purchase a package, they can click on the buy package in the back end, and here they can see a list of packages. You can list specific packages or offer subscriptions for recurring revenue. What's very convenient is the user can purchase the plan and check out directly right from their account page. Once they have purchased a plan, they now have the option to bump the ad or promote their ads. The classified ad website that we're gonna make today is very simple to use. It looks really nice. And after probably just like an hour of using it, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. So we're gonna make this classified ad website in four simple steps. In step one, we'll get web hosting and a domain. A domain is the name of your websites, like mycoolwebsite.com, and web hosting will host your website online 24 hours a day. In step two, we'll download a premium theme. We're gonna be using a premium theme for this website. There is a one-time fee associated with this, but it's a one-time fee for lifetime access. In step three, we'll design the website. In step three, I'll show you guys how to design the website and customize it to fit anyone's type of niche. There are several different niches to choose from, and in this video, I'll walk you through how to import specific demos and also design your websites. In step four, theme options. Theme options are critical. This is how the theme works and where most of the options are available. The theme options include things like how to adjust the page layout, how to create pricing packages, and a lot more. So we'll cover all this in the theme options section of this video. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase web hosting. 
And this is SiteGround.com. Now, SiteGround.com is among one of the fastest, yet also most reliable web hosting providers available. Now, how do I know that? How do you guys know I'm not just lying to you, right? Well, we actually test all of the hosting companies that we recommend on this YouTube channel. So over the last 30 days, you guys will see that we've had zero downtime with SiteGround, and all of our websites load at around one second with SiteGround.com. So you guys will have a fast and reliable website when hosting with SiteGround.com. Now, this is their current landing page, but the link that you guys used might have taken you guys to this page, which is my current landing page with SiteGround.com. Now, just for using my link, you guys will get a free domain. Pretty cool, right? So you guys just came up and you guys do get 86% off your web hosting. So congratulations. Now, here we have three different plans. We have the startup, the grow big, and the go geek. Now, I usually recommend the grow big, the main difference is with the Grow Big plan, you guys can host unlimited websites versus the startup, which is just one. And the Go Geek, you know, that's something something a little bit larger scale, something for like me, you know, where my website's getting like a few hundred thousand visits. But for those of you who are just getting started out, the Grow Big will do just fine. So right here, let's click on Get Plan. So go ahead and register your domain, right? So this is the name of your website. And this can be anything, right? So just give it some thoughts. I'm gonna put something very basic here. So Daryl's chat tutorial.com. See if that's available. Oh no, it's not. Oh no, no, so sorry. Daryl's chat tutorial.com. There we go. Okay. Next, you'll be brought to your review and complete page. So here you're gonna create an account. So you'll put in your email, your password. You'll put in your first name, your last name, yada, yada, yada. Here, you'll enter in your payment information, like your credit card and your social security number. I'm just kidding, guys, that's a joke. <laughs> they don't ask for your social, it's a joke. Don't, don't put it on there, it's a big joke. Next, we have purchase information. And for the period, I recommend doing either 12 months or 24 months. The reason why is because when you guys use my link, you guys do get the maximum discount code available. You guys also do get a free domain, so this will save you guys more money in the long run. Now here we have extra services. And guys, I do recommend selecting one of these options for extra services. I do recommend the domain privacy. This will actually protect your personal information from companies who want to send you spam, right? So if you don't check this, you guys might get emails for Viagra, for SEO packages, from all this crazy marketers. So if you guys do add domain privacy protection, this will protect your personal information from third parties. And once we scroll down, you guys will go ahead and confirm. And if you guys do want to subscribe to their newsletter, you'll click on that box. And once you guys fill everything out, you guys will then click on pay now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill all this information out and I'll meet you on the next page. All right, cool. So once you guys go through the process and sign up and pay for your account, it'll then tell you that your account has been successfully created. Right here, let's click on proceed to customer area. All right, so it actually took me to a login page right here where it wants me to log in. So I'm going to enter my credentials here and then click on login. All right, and this is your welcome message from SiteGround. Now, the very first thing that you guys should do before we set up our website is to verify your address and your domain. The reason why is if you guys don't verify this within two weeks, they're gonna suspend the domain. So whatever email that you guys use to sign up for, you'll just go to that specific email and you'll get an email that looks just like this right here where it says verification required. You'll simply go over here and just click on this link and that's gonna verify your domain. So here is the current domain that I used. So we're gonna scroll down here and click on verify information. And the reason why they asked for that is because this is part of ICANN rules where basically the domain that issues them, uh, they want to know who owns that domain. So in case later you guys wanna sell it or you wanna claim ownership, they know exactly whose it is. So let's go back to our Cycron account here. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is set up our website. So right here, click on set up site. So right here, we have our existing domain, right? Where we're going to select the domain that we already have purchased. So right here is the current domain. And then we'll click on continue. Next on the left side, you're gonna see start new website. Let's go ahead and click on select and start a new website. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna select WordPress. So right here under WordPress, click on select. Now go ahead and create your login credentials. Now these are the credentials that you guys use to log into WordPress so you guys can build and modify your blog and website. So right here, you'll put in the email address and then you'll put in a password. Make sure to write this down because if you guys do forget this, you'll have to uh, go to the reset password and you'll have to contact support if that email address isn't available. So yeah, just make sure to write this down, okay? And once you guys do, you'll go ahead and click on continue. 
So next they're offering us the SiteGround site scanner. I don't really want this. So right here, I'll just click on finish. Awesome, it is now creating our WordPress website. So just give us about two minutes. All right, cool. So now SiteGround has created our website. So over here under site tools, let's go ahead and click on site tools. All right, cool. And here is the customer site portal. And here you guys can access different things. Like you guys can create email accounts. You can access your file manager. On the left side, you can see you can access the file manager, you know, access your FTP accounts. Here you can get access to backups where they create a backup. I believe it's every six hours, pretty cool. And just some other security options. Uh, over here, you see WordPress, whoops. Here, I'll click on install and manage. Now, what I wanna do is log into our websites. So under WordPress, install and manage, if we scroll down, you're gonna see our installations. So here's our current domain. On the right side right here, where it says log into admin panel, go ahead and click on log into admin panel. And this is gonna log you into your WordPress websites. Now this is SiteGround Setup Wizard, and you guys can actually choose to exit out of this, but if you guys want to actually go through the process, here I'll click on start now. So once you guys log into WordPress, it'll prompt you through the SiteGround Setup Wizard. Now you guys can actually skip this because all it's gonna do here is make you install a WordPress theme, which we're gonna do a little bit later. So at the bottom of the page, you're gonna see the exit, go ahead and click on exit. All right, and this is your WordPress dashboard. So this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top left, we'll click on visit sites. And this is your new WordPress website. It's using a default theme for 2024, but not to worry, we're gonna change this website and make it look much better. So let's go over here back to our dashboard. Now, before going any further, we first need to adjust some of the general settings. So over here under users, let's click on profile. This is where you guys can change the color scheme of the backend, right? So if you guys wanna change a color scheme, I do like midnights. I think some of these are just really ugly, like sunrise. I mean, who likes this? It's so ugly, right? So I'm gonna select midnight just because it's easier you know, to see on the eye. Let's go ahead and scroll down right here. If you guys do wanna change the email for your website, you guys can go ahead and change it right here. Make sure you guys have access to this email because if you do forget your WordPress password, it will send the credentials to this specific email. And we'll keep scrolling down right here. Now, also, if you guys do wanna change the password for your website, you guys can change it right here. I'll be showing you how to log in and log out of your website in just a bit, but this is where you guys can change the password for your WordPress websites. Once you make those changes at the bottom right here, I'll click on update profile. All right, next we're gonna go over here and click on the general under settings. Now, right here, you guys can see there is the email. And again, you guys can update this email if you choose to do so. But this option right here is actually very important for this tutorial. Make sure that you guys do have anyone can register. This will allow it so people can actually register on your classified ad website. So make sure that you guys do have this box checked. Next, we have site language. If you guys do speak specific languages and you wanna update them here, you can go ahead and change it. So if you speak German or English or Spanish or whatever, you can go ahead and change it. There are so many languages here, it is crazy. I don't even know what half of these are, but uh, this is where you guys can change it, right? So once you guys select the language and you click on the membership, we'll scroll to the bottom and then we'll click on save changes. Okay, now another very important option is the permalink option. So over here under the settings, you're gonna see permalinks. Go ahead and click on permalinks. You wanna select your permalink structure to post name. The reason why you want to do this is because this is actually optimal for SEO and most themes assume you're gonna have post name. So the import process will be a lot smoother if you guys select post name. So make sure that you guys do select post name, scroll to the bottom and then click on save changes. Okay, so now let's click on dashboard. So now that we talked about the general options, now let me show you guys how to log in and log out of your WordPress website so you can pretty much work on your website from any location. So first I'm gonna go ahead and log out. At the top right, I'll click on log out. And now I'm logged out of WordPress. Now in order to log into this page right here, you'll see that if I go to my domain, you'll see that I'm brought to this page right here and there's no way for me to log in on the website, right? So you'll see that gray bar is gone. So in order to log in, I'm gonna to go to the domain and type in dash wp-admin and then press enter. Once you do that, it'll prompt you to the login screen. Now, these are the login credentials that you guys used when you installed WordPress. So I'll put in my username or the email 
and then put in your password. I'll click on remember me and then I'll click on login. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of WordPress from any location. All right, cool. So we got our web hosting and now let's go to the next section. So this next section, we are now going to download and purchase a premium WordPress theme to build this website. Now, let me step back here, guys. I really did my homework. You know, I purchased about 10 classified ad WordPress theme. In fact, I made a video about the best classified ad WordPress theme and I narrowed my list down to this one theme. It's a very convenient theme. The users can access all the options in the back end. It's really simplified and it has a really modern twist. There are many other themes out there, but they're they're not as good as they look, <laughs> you know? So uh, we're gonna be using one called the Stevo. So there is a link in the description to use this theme. So with that said, let's go ahead and now download and purchase the premium WordPress theme, the Stevo. Okay, so now we're going to install a premium classified ad WordPress theme in order to build the website. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase. You guys ready? The list of O theme. So for this video, we'll be using the list of O theme. Now this is one of the best classified ad themes for WordPress. It's a newer theme, has tons of features, tons of payment gateways, and it also brings a really modern twist for your websites. Now, before I made this video, you'll see that we actually purchased almost all of the classified ad themes for WordPress, and we narrowed our list down to this one theme. So I think you guys are gonna really like it. It's well-coded, very stable, and it's also really simple to use and navigate. We actually made a, another video on the best classified ad themes for WordPress, and in that video, we also do recommend to use this specific theme. So the list of O theme costs around $69. Now this is a one-time lifetime payment. You never have to pay this ever again. And there is also no subscription required. So this is a one-time payment for lifetime access. So go ahead and download and purchase this theme. So right here, I'll click on add to cart and then we'll click on go to checkouts. So you'll go ahead and go through the checkout process. You guys can pay with either PayPal or credit card and then check out. And once you guys purchase this, I will then meet you in the account section. All right, congratulations, you guys have purchased the Classified Ads WordPress theme. Now we're gonna scroll down right here, and then you're gonna see the Listivo theme, right? So right here under download, I'll click on download, and then I'll click on installable WordPress file only. This is gonna download the theme onto your computer. You guys might also need your purchase code, so you guys can also go ahead and download this purchase code as well. So now that we download the theme, let's go back over here to our dashboard. So now we're going to upload that theme onto our website. So over here, appearance, let's click on themes. Up here under add theme, I'll click on add new theme. And then I'll click on upload theme right here. And then I'll choose the file. And then we're going to upload that zip file that we downloaded from theme forest. So you'll see right here, the list of O theme. I'll click on open. And then I'll click on install now. All right, cool. So once you guys install it, we'll then click on activate. Now, once you guys activate the theme, it's going to recommend to install specific plugins. So you'll see this notice right here. Also, if this does not appear, you can also click on install plugins and it'll prompt the same page. So I'll click on begin installing plugins. And here are the plugins that you guys need. Now, the great thing about the list of O theme is that it only requires one to two plugins in order for it to work. The other themes, guys, they recommend like 20. It's crazy, <laughs> you know? So uh, this theme actually is very lightweight compared to a lot of the other competitor themes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on install under the civil core. Here, click on return to required plugin installer. And then also I'm gonna click on the list of updater. So I'll also install this, go back. And then we can install each of these one by one. Now, the reason why I didn't do it in bulk is because sometimes I run into errors. So I just install one by one, so it's a lot smoother. So now I'm going to install the Elementor page builder. And then the contact form seven. And then the MailChimp one. This is, you know, it's optional. You don't have to, but uh, hey, it's always nice to have it. So I'll go back. So now we're gonna activate these. So now we can go ahead and actually bulk activate. So I'll go ahead and click on the checkbox, click on bulk actions, click on activate, and then click on apply. All right, cool. So now I'll click on return to dashboard. All right, cool. So once you guys click on return to WordPress dashboard, it'll then prompt you to import a demo website. Now, before we import a demo website, there is something that I do want to address about WordPress themes and server requirements. Hey guys, real quick. So for every theme on ThemeForest, most of them have their own server settings. For this specific theme, they have specific server requirements. 
This means you guys will have to adjust your server settings to accommodate the WordPress theme. So here are the specific server requirements. I'll also leave a link in the description to these basic server requirements. So I'll show you guys how to adjust it for the current recommended hosting. But if you guys are using a different web host, you guys will need to adjust those uh, server settings to make sure the theme works properly. So in this section, I'll show you guys how to quickly change these server settings. All right, so here are the server settings that we're gonna adjust. Now we can adjust most of these. There is like one or two that we can't, but for most of these, we're going to uh, adjust it to make sure that we have a smooth import process. So if you guys are using SiteGround, I'll be showing you guys how to do this. And if you guys are using another host, you guys can just go ahead and ask your host to adjust these settings. So over here, I'm gonna go to websites and I'll scroll down here. And you're gonna see that I have a domain right here. We're working on this one. So I'll click on site tools under the domain. And on the left side, you're gonna see devs. I'll click on devs and then you're gonna see PHP manager. Go ahead and click on PHP manager. Now I know you guys might not be techie with all these server settings, but you only have to do this one time and then that's it, right? So what I'm gonna do here is click on PHP variables and then you're gonna see all these different names right here on the left side, right? You're gonna see uh, you know, all these random little things like, you know, words, and I'm sure you guys don't know what this means, but that's quite okay. So what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna go to each one and make sure that it meets the server requirements. So the upload max file size, 32 megs, right? So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find upload max file size, right? So let's keep scrolling down here. We're gonna keep scrolling down, go to load more, and we're gonna go all the way to the bottom to upload max file size. I think it's all the way at the bottom. Yep, right here. So upload max file size, make sure. So ours is at 256, obviously, so it's overkill, but that's okay. So we can leave it at 256, right? You just wanna make sure that it's bigger than 32, because if it's smaller than that, it might not be able to import the websites. Post max size is 32 megabytes. So let's go back over here. Post max size, you'll see, you know, SiteGround's way above that, 256. So we're gonna leave it there. Okay, now if this is smaller than 32 megs, then you need to adjust it. So max input time, 300, right? We're going to scroll up. Okay, so the next one is max execution time and max input time. And SiteGround has it limited at 120. So I know it says 300, but we can still probably import the website. So 120 still will probably do just fine. And the next one is max input variable. So I believe we can go down there and change it to 10,000. I think it's way at the bottom here. Max input variable. We'll scroll the way bottom. You'll see max input variable. And I'll click on change value. And just make sure this is also at 10,000. So I'll confirm that as well. Okay. And the last one is memory limit at 196. So our memory limit I think is a lot higher actually. So let's go ahead and scroll up here. So here's the memory limit. You'll see it's at 768, which is actually a lot higher than the recommended. So that is also just fine. So although we couldn't change these two, the import process should work just smoothly because I tested it before I made this video. So let's go ahead and go back to our website. So let's go ahead now and import a demo website. Now you guys can actually import any of these demos, right? But I will show you guys how to import demos and then also how to create a fresh installation of WordPress in order to re-import any demo with no problems. So just so we're on the same page, let's use the demo classic. So right here, I'll click on import. Now this might take anywhere between one to two minutes. So just give this time and let's come back to it. All right, so once you guys finish importing the demo, it'll then prompt you with this quick setup wizard. Now there's three check boxes. There's registration, monetization, and moderation. Now you guys can always come back to this later, but registration simply allows people to register on your website. So I'm gonna check this box right here. Monetization allows you to actually integrate payment gateways. Now for right now, I'll leave it unchecked, but we'll check it a little bit later. And then for moderation, you can have this checked or unchecked, which essentially allows you to moderate ads people post on your websites. I'll also make sure this is checked as well. So once you check these two boxes, now let's click on save. Okay, so now we have the basic options here. Now here you'll see they've imported the logo defaults, the logo reversed. They've also applied the homepage for us. Now, sometimes when you import the demo content, sometimes you might need to adjust the homepage. I have discovered that sometimes it might not work perfectly. So you just might need to adjust the homepage if it did not work for you. Here they have some sample data. So you can put your email here, your public phone number if you choose to put it. 
Also, you have a public address and then a copyright notice. You guys can put your information here or you can put a PO box or a Google number just in case you don't wanna give out your real phone number. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. And now let's take a look at the website. So up here, I'll click on visit site. And look at that. We now have a beautiful classified ad website that we imported in just a few seconds. Now, if something didn't import correctly for you, usually you just gotta refresh the page or clear the cache and everything should work just fine. So you'll see here, people can post ads. We have our search box. We have our pages that imported correctly. Let's go ahead and scroll down right here. So here we have categories. We have devices and cars. I like the sample data. You know, I think it looks really nice and friendly, right? So we have all this cool categories. And then here we have some featured ads and they look really friendly. You know, we got some little kittens, you know, cause some people like to give away cats. We have iPhone cases, we have some toys and users can actually scroll right here and check out the other classified ads on your websites. I do like this slider, really, really cool. We'll go ahead and scroll down right here. We have our demo content, right? We have some more demo content. We have some testimonials. You just can go ahead and scroll through testimonials and voila, we have our beautiful footer here at the bottom. I really like the look and feel of this demo website. I think it's really modern and it's really inviting. And I think that overall, it's a really friendly looking website. So now let's go ahead and take a look at these other pages just to make sure it all worked, all right? So we got our blog, right? We have our cool little blog. I mean, look at that. I love this blog. It's beautiful. <laughs> you know, it's, it's better than my blog actually. So let's go over here to the about us. All right, you'll see everything imported correctly. Looks great, all right? And then we'll go over here to our contact us. And then we have our contact us form right here. And if a user puts information right here, it'll go directly to your email inbox. So how about that? So everything imported correctly, the website looks great. So let's go ahead and let's go back to the homepage. And one last thing I wanna mention, this theme fully supports RTL, which is right to left. So if you guys are writing in a specific language and you need the RTL feature, this theme fully supports RTL, such as Arabic and also Hebrew. Okay, so now that we have downloaded and purchased the theme, now I'll talk about how to design the website. So in this part of the video, I'll show you guys how to design the websites with the drag and drop page builder. I'll also show you guys how to create pages and also add them to the menu. We'll also go through some of the elements. So when you purchase these themes, they create specific elements for the elements or page builder. So I'll give you guys a quick overview about how to use those elements. Okay, so now let me give you guys a quick 10 minute overview about how to design the website using the Elementor page builder. Here at the top, you're gonna to see edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. This is gonna turn on the page builder so that we can design the website. All right, here's a quick little notification. We'll just go ahead and close that. Now here's the Elementor page builder. On the left side, you're gonna see elements and you can pretty much drag and drop these elements onto the page. So for example, I'll take this heading text We'll drop it right there where that pink line is, and then you'll see the element propagates. Now for every element, there's gonna be three specific tabs. You have the content tab. This controls the actual content and the alignment for the actual elements. Then you have the styling tab. The styling tab controls the color and also the topography of the actual fonts. You can also add in things like text shadow and also blend mode as well, right? And then they have the advanced tab. The advanced tab changes the position of the actual elements. And you can also do things like add in motion effects. So right here, I'll click on motion effects. And then we can choose to add in some sort of animation, right? Like bounce in right or slide up or rotate in down right, which is really ugly, <laughs> right? So uh, you can go ahead and use these advanced controls in order to further uh, customize the elements. Now, if you guys want to duplicate an element or delete it, you can actually just right click on it and here you'll see we can duplicate it, right? Or I can right click on it and delete it. Right click and delete it. Now also, let's say for example, you guys made a mistake, right? Maybe you guys took this element and you just dragged it somewhere right there and this up here and you made a mistake, right? You guys can always click on the history tab and this will actually go back to every specific part that you were editing your websites. So there we go, back to square one. Here, click on these nine squares. So let's go ahead and talk about the actual elements. So these elements are with the free version of Elementor. So these are the pro elements, and these are only included with Elementor Pro. And if we scroll down, we have the general. These are also free elements for Elementor. 
And then also we have the list of O elements. Now these elements are exclusive to the list of O theme. But before we get into that, so let's just go ahead and go back to the basics. I'll go ahead and scroll up here. So if you guys want to go ahead and drag in an element, all you got to do is, like I said earlier, just take an element here and just drag it there. And then here under the content, we'll go ahead and change this to the best ads ever, the best ads ever. We'll go ahead and also click on style. And then here we can adjust the alignments to centered. And then we can change the topography here to something else. And then we'll actually change this to Poppins, right? Poppins is the go-to font. And then I'll just bold it, right? Poppins bolds and voila, right? So it's pretty simple to understand. You can just take any of these elements here and drag and drop it. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single element with Elementor because I pretty much made a whole nother video on Elementor. And after you guys just spend maybe an hour of using this page builder, you guys will definitely get the hang of how to use all the elements with the Elementor page builder. So now let's imagine we want to add a new section in between this. So we have our landing page right here, and then we also have our section, but I wanna add in a new section here. So if you do wanna add a new section, all you gotta do is click on the plus, click on plus again, and here we can select specific columns. So we have four columns, three columns. Now these are referring to Elementor's Flexbox container. I did make a video on that and I'll leave that in the description. But for example, I'll click on the three column row, right? And then we can even space these out, right? To, you know, fit what we're trying to accomplish here, right? And then we'll take in these elements and we can just drag and drop them, right? So I'll take the heading text, put it here. And then we'll throw in an image, right? Choose an image put in uh, this guy here. And then we can drag in something else here, like a button, right? And then we can style the button. So this will be like learn more, right? So learn more, I'll align that. And then we can also change like the topography and everything. So over here, I'll change this to Poppins. And we'll do Poppins bold, right? And then we can change like the background color because we have this gray color going on, I don't like it. So let's just change that to something else. So color, and we can give this like a, you know, like a blue color or something, right? Something, something a little bit more vibrant. There we go. And then this will be like, you know, Daryl Wilson. We'll also align this. And maybe we can add in some filler content in the middle, right? Let's see, we can put that in the middle here, drag it right there. Okay, there we go. And then this can like talk about Daryl Wilson, you know, you can talk about your staff and so on and so forth. Now you can also go ahead and say, you know what, I've made this section, I wanna duplicate it. So I'll right click on this column up here and I'll duplicate it. Right click, duplicate, right click and duplicate. And then we can also delete these other boxes over here because we no longer need them, right? And of course, you guys can take these elements and drag and drop them, vice versa. You'll see that the page builder is very fluid, very simple to use, right? And then all you have to do here is obviously change this to something else, right? This could be like Jennifer, right? So we'll change this to like Jennifer Wilson, right? Jennifer Wilson, and then so on and so forth. Okay, you guys get the point? Now, there is another thing I do wanna mention, and that is padding. So let's say that you guys do make a section. Notice here how it's too close to the top. So I'll click on the flex box, go to the advanced, and then here we have padding. Padding is essentially space, right? So I'm gonna click on link values together and I wanna add padding now to the top. See that? So we'll add in like 60 padding to the top and then maybe like 30 to the bottom. Look at that. Also, if you guys do wanna add a background color to this, here under the style tab for our background, we can also choose to add in a color, a gradient, a video, or even a slideshow. But I'll go ahead and click on classic, and we can give it like a subtle gray color, like a very subtle gray, just to, you know, just to make sure that it's a new section. So as you guys can tell, it's a very simple builder to use, and you can just basically grab these elements and just learn them on your own free time, right? So icon box, just drag it, see what it does. Here you'll see it's a little icon box, and so on and so forth. Go ahead and check out some more, right? They have some really cool ones, you know, they have like a, a counter, they have all sorts of really cool icons, like here we can add in social icons, right? So you'll see now it looks a little bit more filled, but we do need to add a little bit more padding to that, right? So you'll see now the, the padding is a little bit better, right? So on your own free time, feel free to go to these elements. If you guys do need help, I do have a full tutorial on Elementor. 
So here is the video, and this is a four and a half hour video on Elementor and Elementor Pro, and it goes through everything. It goes through mobile optimization, it goes through all the advanced settings, it goes through the Flexbox container, and all the pro features. So I do wanna focus on the classified ads aspect in this tutorial. So if you guys do wanna learn more about Elementor and all those features, I will leave this video for all of you guys in the description below of this video. But with that said, let's go ahead now and delete this section. So I'm gonna right click on this column and then just delete all of it. So now that we went through the basic free options, now let's talk about the list of O options. Now the list of O options can be a little confusing when you guys first use them. So essentially these options, you'll need to add in everything in order for the element to propagate. Let me give you guys an example. Here we'll go ahead and scroll down and we have uh, services version four, right? So you'll see nothing propagates when you add in, you know, the element. Usually with Elementor, the element propagates. You need to actually add an item right here. So for example, we'll first add in the image, and then here's the title, right? And then here is the text for the title, right? So you'll see that the element does propagate, but you'll need to actually add in a little bit more in order for it to fully work. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this. Oops, and duplicate it one more time and one more time. And after actually using the elements, they do actually propagate quite nicely. Now these elements actually have their own padding built in. So they've pretty much made elements for you and they've styled for you. So you don't have to do everything from scratch, which is pretty helpful, right? And then of course, under the style section, you guys can you know go through their options here and change the background color of the background circle to fit your specific uh, you know criteria. So uh, yeah, that is just one example. I'll go ahead and right click and delete this. So what I'm gonna do is close these other ones right here and I only want list of O to display. So I'll go ahead and close all these and there you go. So now we only have list of O. So also we have a button, right? And you'll see the button self propagates and the style is already done for you guys. So you'll see the design tab is actually gone and all you have to do here is just go ahead and change the text right here to learn more. All right, we can center that. And then here you see type. Now these colors are actually being pulled through the backend settings, which we'll talk more about a little bit later. So you can adjust the color a little bit later once you set those options. Go ahead and go back here. And then also here is another one, which is called stats. And if I drop it, you'll see nothing propagates. You need to add in something right here. So this would be like 40. And then here we'll do 50. And then this will be like our rating. So essentially, this is basically like a 40 out of 50 rating, right? And here I'll go ahead and duplicate it, duplicate it, and also duplicate it. So there you go, you'll see that the elements propagate, and they actually have another one called stats version two. So over here, I'll take this one and drag and drop it. And it's the same thing, right? So you'll enter in a number here, and then like our customers, right? And then here we can go ahead and style it with the colors. You can change the separator color and the label color. Now they've actually done a really good job at styling this here at the bottom. So this is actually the same element. And you'll see once you actually add in a little bit of work and effort, you can really make these elements quite nice. You know, you can make them style really nicely to fit your specific criteria for your classified ad websites. So let's go ahead and scroll back up. And now let's delete this and let's talk about the more important elements. So I'll go ahead and delete this and also delete this as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on the nine squares and now we're gonna find the list of O list. So I'm just gonna type it in here because there's a lot of elements they have. So the one that we're looking for is the listing list. I'll take this and I'll drag and drop it. Now essentially what this does is this will actually display and showcase your classified ads once we create more. So you'll see they have small and regular right? So here are your ads. And then you have full control, right? You can show how many ads you want to display. You can choose the number of columns. So if you want two columns or four columns, you know, you want eight to show. So now there's eight, right? And you guys have full access to further customize this specific section. But the listing element, this allows you to display the listings on your website at any location that you guys choose. So yeah, I'll go ahead and delete this. And let's use another one. So they have another one here, which is version two, which is also very interesting. Listing list version two. I'll go ahead and drag and drop this as well. And for the small heading, I'll put the best ads. Get the best deals for your community. 
I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just going off the top of my head, guys. <laughs> but um, here you can see that they've actually styled it for you. So we probably need to delete this, right? But you'll see that you can go ahead and adjust this to your liking. And then also for the advanced tab, you can go ahead and change the margin and padding and so on and so forth. So look at that. We have the ads displaying and we can choose regular or small. And then you can style this and you can adjust it any which way you guys would want. Okay, so these are pretty much the more important elements, which are the listing elements, which will display the ads on your websites. Now, there is something else I do want to talk about, and that is the actual template loader. So Listivo does have some very interesting options, and one of them is the template loader. This will essentially load an entire template on your websites. So here, I'll take the template loader and just drag and drop it. Once I drag and drop it, this will actually load the entire template all over again on your websites. Now, I'm not really sure why they added this in, to be honest. I'll just be very upfront. I don't find a use for this because they've already propagated it. But if you guys do want to load the template on any page, you can use the template loader. And then here you can go ahead and adjust it. Now for the templates, if you guys do want to make them full width, I'll quickly show you guys how to do that. So the first thing I'll do is click on the flex box and we're going to go to layout. We're first going to change the minimum height to 100 VH. So we'll change this to 100. This will essentially give it the full height as a container. We'll then change this to full width. And then for the advanced, we're going to put zero padding. So basically saying, I don't want any padding. The last thing we're going to do is click on the actual elements, go to the advanced, and then for the width, I want to make this 100% full width. This will give it that full width look like the rest of the website, so there's no padding on the outside. So that's just a quick little trick if you guys do want to use the template loader. So now I'll go ahead and delete this. I'll right click and delete it, right click and delete. And essentially we're back to square one where you'll see the website is just like before. So we just deleted the template loader and everything looks great. Now I also do want to talk about the Listivo Hero Loader. So under search widget, we're going to type in Hero. Now for some reason, these guys have actually created specific landing page elements for the actual theme. I'm not really sure why they did this as well, but let me just show you guys what this does. So here, click on add a section. I'll click on the plus and then I'll click on the arrow. I'll go back over here and we're going to type that in one more time. So hero. So here I'll take hero search version 10 and I'll drag and drop it. And you'll see that it already starts to propagate and we need to add an element in order for this to fully propagate. So let's go ahead and add in a background image here. All right. This is our main heading text. And this is our main subtext. And then here under style, we'll just go ahead and change the actual text color, right? So we'll change this to white. And we'll do the same thing for the heading. We'll also make this white. Now, this is just an example. You guys don't have to follow me here, right? But I just want to demonstrate how these work. And then here we have categories. Now we haven't created any categories yet. We're going to do that in the very next section. But once we do create categories, you can add them here. So for example, let's say you guys have a category that relates to something like birds or accounting or real estate services. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add those right there. Once you add it, you'll then see it propagates, but you might want to add an image for the dogs, right? So let's go over here and we can add in a quick little icon, right? Here I'll put in dogs and cats. All right, cool, there we go. And then you can make another category for maybe real estate or maybe free stuff and so on and so forth. But what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and duplicate it maybe two more times just to add in filler space, right? And next we have fields. Now fields is essentially saying, what do you want to display or what do you want users to search for? Well, I'll add an item and I want them to actually search by category. So now I'm basically saying, I want you to search by specific categories, okay? And I'll add in an icon here. Here I'll just put in like a little checkbox, insert that. And then you can add in more, right? So for example, I'll duplicate that. And I'll add in one more, right? This can be something else like uh, bedrooms or salary or something else. But I'll just put in something like price. So now you'll see that the price propagates, right? And you can add as many fields as you guys choose. So depending on what you're actually going to make, you can sort of redirect the users to search for specific features. 
So if you want them to search by bedrooms, like let's say for example, this is a apartment classified ad website, you can have the users search for specific bedrooms and so on and so forth. So as you guys can tell, you can turn this website into pretty much any type of classified ad website you guys choose just by creating the categories. But I'll go ahead and just leave something else a little bit more basic like keyword, okay? And then I'll take that, I'll go ahead and close this and I'll take this and I'll drag it above it. So now the user can search by category. They can also search for a keyword and then they can also adjust the price as well. Pretty cool, right? And now we just need to readjust this to make it full width. So I'll go ahead and click on this. Go to the advanced. We'll make this full width. And then we also need to do this for the actual flex box as well. So I'll click on the flex box, change this to 100 VH. Okay, under the advance, we will make this zero padding. And then we also need to change the layout here to full width. There we go. So this can essentially be your other landing page. Now, each of these elements corresponds to the actual demos. So I, I believe the one that we're using right here, I think this one is actually referring to this specific landing page right here. So you'll see if I click on this landing page, they've styled it in a whole different way. So they have a make, a model and a location. You can also use this for apartments. You can use this for giving out free stuff for real estates. You can use it for cars and so on and so forth. So all you'd have to do here is just change these fields to something like bedrooms. If you choose to want to run a classified ad website for real estate. So as you guys can tell, it's very diverse and it's all about creativity. Whatever you guys want to do, you guys can definitely do it with this theme. So now that I showed you guys how to actually use the hero search, let's go ahead and delete this and I'll go ahead and close that as well. So that is pretty much a quick overview about how to use these elements. So for example, now that we know how to use the elements, here we can go ahead and sort of modify the search right here. So I'll click on the pencil, and let's say for example, you don't want people to search for specific keywords, but you want them to look for something like categories. I'll go ahead and duplicate this, I'll open keyword, and then for the field, I'll just change this to category. So essentially now we have people that can search for specific items. They can choose the category and then they can also choose location. If you want to get rid of keyword, I'll just close that. And then they can search by category and location. So we will talk more about how to add in specific taximonies and how to add in more fields a little bit later in this video, but that is a general overview about how to use the elements for the Lacivo theme. I hope this part of the video helped. And if you guys do want to go ahead and save the changes you made here at the bottom, I'll click on update. Now I'll go ahead and view the page. So now let's go ahead and test this out, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at something. Here we have services. And then under services, we have something like automotive services. Okay, we'll go ahead and search that. There's only one result. So you'll see there is one result, but um, yeah, we can go ahead and click on this as well. And then here is the results page where you're gonna see that all the information propagates quite nicely right here. Okay. So that is a general rundown of how to use the Lacivo elements. Again, we will come back to this a little bit later. Now also for every other page, you guys can go ahead and use the Elementor page builder. So for example, here's the about us page. And if you guys do wanna design this page, all you gotta do is click on edit with Elementor. And then from here, you guys can go ahead and design the page as usual. So you'll see they have this content section, which they're using this thing called content version two. So you'll see here how this actually propagates the entire section for you. I think the developers wanted to do this in order to make things easier, but I don't think they should have done that, you know, uh, personally, but I do think that it is a very convenient element to add in order to quickly propagate sections. So you guys can go ahead and go mess with these elements. You can tinker around with them and learn how to use all these elements on your own free time. But once you guys make the changes you want, you can then click on updates to save any of the changes that you've made. All right, and we'll go ahead and view the page. And then let's check out the contact us. Okay, so contact us, same thing, edit with Elementor. And then here we can go ahead and, you know, adjust this to your liking. So you'll see here, if I click on that, we can go ahead and adjust this content and so on and so forth. So I think at this point, you guys get it. I think at this point, you guys know how to design and customize your website. So now that we've talked about how to design the website, let's go back to the home page. Here, click on the logo. Now let's talk about how to create pages and also how to add them to the menu. So let's go back over here to our dashboard. And over here under pages, I'll click on all pages. Now here's all the pages that come with your websites. If you guys do want to delete a page, you guys can just click on a page right here 
and under bulk actions, you can move it to the trash and then click on apply. But first, let's just go ahead and create a page. So up here, add a new page. And this will be like terms of service, right? Terms of service. At the top right, I'll click on publish and publish. And then we can design the page using Elementor. So right here, edit with Elementor, and this will turn on the builder. And then here we go. We can design the page as usual. Now over here, we have this template section. And what's really cool is they actually gave us some privacy policy pages that we can just go ahead and import. So here you'll see privacy policy. I'll go ahead and insert this and then click on apply. Cool. And what you can do here is just go ahead and maybe change this to something like terms of service terms and conditions or whatever. And then you can go ahead and adjust this to your liking, right? So this can be the privacy policy. So we have terms of service and privacy policy on the same page. You can go ahead and replace this content with whatever you want to you know, put. And then once you're done, you'll click on updates. So we actually created this page, but if you guys notice, if we go to our menu up here, it's not on our menu, right? So we don't actually have this on our menu. Now, typically terms of service don't belong on the menu, but let me just show you guys how to do it anyways. So once you guys do create a page, let's go to the menu section. So let's go to the dashboard. Over here under appearance, I'll then click on menus. And here you're gonna see that we have specific menus. So these are our footer menus, and this is the main menu. And this was actually created when you imported the demo contents. So I'll go ahead and click on select. Okay. Now I want to get rid of some of these. Um, you know, we don't really need some of these because this is for like the demo. So we're going to go ahead and remove these, right? We'll leave these ones right here, right? Except for the 404. I'll also get rid of that one, right? And over here, I'll click on view all. And then we'll scroll down and then you'll see terms of service. I'll click add to menu. And then right here, I'll click on save menu. All right, cool. So now if we go back to our website, there you're gonna see terms of service is now on the menu. And if I click on it, it now takes us to our terms of service page where users can view your terms of service and privacy policy page. So that's how you guys can create pages and also how to add them to the menu. All right, so now that I showed you guys how to design the website and add pages, now let me show you guys how to completely delete your website and then restart with the new templates. So over here, I'll click on dashboard. Now we're gonna scroll to the bottom and we're gonna use a plugin that's gonna completely delete the website and start over from scratch. So if you guys have done any work, just know that this will delete all of your work if you choose to reset your websites. So under search plugins, I'll type in resets. Here's the plugin that I recommend. So you guys can use any of these other plugins, but I use this one just because it's easy, right? So right here, I'll click on install now and then I'll click on activate. All right, I'll dismiss this. And if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see WP Reset, where we can open WP Reset tools. I'll go ahead and click on this. And if we scroll to the bottom right here, you guys are gonna see that under Site Resets, we can type in Reset and reset the websites. Now, just to remember guys, uh, this will delete your entire website. So just be mindful about that. So if you have done work and you don't wanna reset your website, do not reset it. But if you guys do wanna reset it, so I'll type in Reset. And then I'll click on reset sites and then reset WordPress. This is going to reset your entire website to factory settings. All right, cool. And if we go over here to visit sites, you'll see that our website is back to original settings, right? So yeah, that's just a basic rundown of how to actually restart from scratch. And if we go to over here to our dashboard, we now need to reactivate the theme. So over here, appearance, themes, now the theme is gonna be located in your directory still. So it's still in your database, right? It's not completely gone. So here we have the Lestivo theme. I'll go ahead and activate it. And then the same thing, begin of activating plugins. And then right here, I'll go ahead and bulk activate the plugins. Here I'll click on apply. Then I'll click on return to dashboard. Okay, and then here we go. We're back to square one where we can go ahead and re-import any of the other demos that you guys choose. But uh, I'll go ahead and just re-import the demo classic again. So right here, import. So now let's go ahead and wait for the demo importer. Okay, so now that we finished the import, I'll click on registration, moderation, and then click on save. All right, you'll see everything has propagated right here. And let's take a look at our website.
And just like that, we're back to square one. So you'll see the page that we created is gone. It's not added to the menu. And if we scroll down, you'll see everything is back to the original settings. So you guys can use that plugin in order to switch between uh, templates if you guys choose to do so. Now, if you guys do want to access to the demos, all you got to do is go over here to dashboard. And then here you'll see demo importer. If you click on demo importer, this takes you right back to the page where you guys can import any of the actual templates. But I do recommend to refresh and restart from scratch because sometimes when you switch between demo to demo, sometimes it can leave bits and parts of other templates onto the new templates. That, at least that was my experience. So if you guys do want to just try it from here, let's just go ahead and check it out here. I'll go ahead and try to import this one and let's see what happens. All right, so I finished importing and I'll click on registration and moderation again and then click on save. So now let's just take a look at what happened. Let's go ahead and visit site and see if it imported correctly. And actually this imported pretty well actually. Looking at everything, it looks like everything imported really nicely actually. Wow. So you may or may not need to reset the web science, but in my specific case, it looks like it worked just fine. But before this video, when I was importing other demos, sometimes bits and parts were left between other templates, but you'll see that it actually propagated quite nicely. And let's just go ahead and test it out. I'll just go ahead and search for something. And look at that. So you'll see the search page looks great and everything imported correctly. So yeah, if you guys do find that the demo import was not successful, you probably need to refresh your website and then start from scratch. But in this case, it worked just fine. Now, before we go on to the next section and talk about theme options, I just want to touch base about WordPress emails and also the contact form. Now, typically with WordPress, sometimes emails typically end up in spam or not delivered at all. This is a very common problem with WordPress. And if you guys are running into these issues, let me quickly just touch base on how to fix that. So over here, I'll go ahead and put in an email, right? So I'll just put in a message here. Hey, what's up? And then I'll click on send message. So you'll see that this has been sent. So now let me check my email. I'll go back over here. And in this specific case, the email did work just fine. So you'll see that this actually worked correctly where the customers will actually get the email. Now, if you guys are experiencing issues where the emails are not being sent to your email address or your customers are not getting the emails, I have a whole other video right here explaining what to do. You typically will need to install an SMTP plugin and then just follow this tutorial. Now, this is if you guys are having email issues. If you guys are not, cool, you don't need to install one. But if you guys are, I'll go ahead and leave this video in the description and this will help you guys route emails directly to your inbox and also your customer's inbox. Now, the very last thing that we're gonna do is I'll show you guys how to input the license code for your theme. So over here under dashboard, you're gonna see list of updater. I'll go ahead and click on this. And this is where you guys can enter in your purchase code. Maybe I should have done this earlier in the video, but I think you know it doesn't really matter when you enter it. So you guys can actually get this from the text file that we downloaded earlier. So I'll go ahead and move this over. Here is our text file. I'll open this. And this right here is your purchase code. So I'll go ahead and copy this and then I'll paste it right here. I'll go ahead and click on save. And now you guys will get future updates for your theme. You guys will also need this to get support for your WordPress theme as well, just in case you guys run into any issues. All right, party people. Well, that is pretty much it for the design aspect of this website. So now that we know how to design the website, create pages, how to add them to the menu and log in and log out of WordPress. Now let's talk about the theme options. All right, so now that we know how to design the website, we're very comfortable and familiar with how to design and customize the websites. Now let's talk about the theme options. So the theme options are basically the bread and butter of your websites. This is what gives it all of its functionality and its customization options and how to actually use the theme. With the theme options, you guys can create pricing packages, you can adjust the ads, and you can also limit and moderate specific features for your visitors. Okay, so now let me show you guys how to quickly create blog posts and also where your blog is located. Now over here, let's go to the dashboard and let's introduce you guys to the blog. So over here we have posts. And if I click on post, you guys are gonna see that these are the self posts that are propagated you guys import the demo. But for total purposes, I'll go ahead and delete all these posts because they're just demo content and we're gonna make our own. So I'll move all these to the trash. Okay, now to create a new blog post right here, let's click on add new post. And this will be like 10 best things to get for free. 
And then right here, we can enter some contents. So this is basic. Oop, let me, let me get out of caps, guys. I, I don't wanna be yelling, here we go. This is basic contents. I can press enter. And then right here, I can add in more, right? So there's this plus icon here at the top left. And this is where you can add in things like images or buttons. Now this is using a different page builder called Gutenberg. I do think Gutenberg is good for the blog post, but I don't think it's good for making pages. I, I think it's like far from it, but um, for example, you can also do something like type in dash and then image, and that'll pull up an image for you. You just click on image and then you can upload the image. And then we'll go to media library. And here we can insert an image, right? And then this can be like, uh, you know, free vacations on classified websites. I don't know, something, right? And then you can keep going here and make more content as you please. Now also over here, I'll click on post, and this is important right here, featured image. So this is the image that actually represents the actual article. And you do wanna put something here that is, um, you know, that'll actually represent the article. So I'll just put this random cherry. Also right here, you can create categories, right? So they've already created categories like animals, uh, business, lifestyle. Uh, I'll create a new one right here with free stuff. Free stuff. So this will actually show a category on the blog post and it'll show free stuff. So anyone who is interested in free stuff, which I'm sure many people are, uh, all of the blog posts that relate to this will display on your blog. So I'm just gonna throw in some demo content here. I'll just paste in some contents and voila. Also, this is an example of what the blog will look like. So I basically just use their same format. So here's the image. We have some, you know, uh, contents. They added in a little block some contents, and then here's the author, and then we have some comments here at the bottom. These right here are widgets, and we'll talk more about how to customize this page a little bit later, but see here, if they click on like adventure, all the blog posts that relate to adventure will propagate really nicely right here, really clean. So I'll show you guys a little bit later how to structure the blog page and also the single post page. But that's how you guys basically create blog posts. It's really simple. So basically, now that we've created this, let's now click on publish and publish. And then I'll view the post. Okay, so same thing, right? We have the cherries, right? And then here we actually have the content for the actual post. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, right? And then here's my username, free stuff, and then people can comment like, cool. Blog post is actually a really good way to market your guys' websites. I actually have content writers on my website. We are getting around 30 to 50,000 visits a month. And it's a full-time thing. You know, we have to pay content writers to keep writing because that's just how it is. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of annoying, but unfortunately it's the best way to get traffic. So that is pretty much how you guys can create a blog and add it to your website. Now let's talk about the more important aspects of this tutorial, like the theme options. So in this part of the video, we're gonna go through all the theme options for Listavo. They are pretty simple to understand, but there's some that can be complicated. So I'm gonna do my best to go through all the options, including the important ones, and explain how all these work. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to the general basic settings. So Listavo panel right here, this controls all of the options, right? Demo importer, this imports demo. Ads, these are where your categories and attributes will be displayed. And then there's the updater, right? So it's pretty simple. We only have four little tabs right here. There's nothing else going on. Also, there is reviews, and this is optional, but you can have people leave reviews for specific vendors. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But let's just go to the general settings. So under list of a panel, I'll first click on settings. Now here's where you guys can apply your logo and also assign your homepage and your email and your phone number. So you do wanna adjust this and change this to something that probably represents your business. Also, if you guys don't have a logo, you guys can always go to Fiverr. If you guys want, you guys can go to my affiliate link right here, darylwilson.com slash Fiverr, and this will take you to Fiverr. And this is a great website where you guys can get a logo for really, really cheap. So over here, I'll just type in logo. And here you guys can see they have a lot of logos and you know the logos are really great. You can get them from really cheap. Here you can get it for $10. Um, some of them can be expensive, you know, it just depends on, you know, the designer and, you know, your style and taste. And uh, yeah, you can also filter right here and get logos even cheaper by going to budget and doing something like under 50 bucks, 
right? This used to be a website where you can get gigs for $5, but it's sort of turned into a more corporate approach style website where now the prices are not all $5, but you still can find them for $5, especially the new guys. So I recommend going to this website, tell them what you want and get a logo for your website. And then once you guys do get a logo, you can go ahead and upload it right here, okay? All right, so pretty basic, right? The basic options are pretty basic. Now let's go to menu. So menu, here we have the main menu, right? Which, which we said earlier. Now you can also choose to make your menu sticky. Now the best way to explain this is just to show you guys. So here I turned on this sticky option. And if I go to the website and I scroll down, you guys are gonna see that the menu actually follows us. You guys see that, how the menu's following us? Because it's sticky. If you take that off, it will no longer stick, right? Makes sense? Okay. Now we have the CTA button. The CTA button is referring to this specific button right here. So you can change this, right? So this will be like post ad, right? You can also change the link. Now, our link is set to the ad listing page, which is the correct page, but you can always link them to any other page, but I think the ad listing makes most sense. So I'm gonna save changes, and then you're gonna see the text change from post ad. So over here, I'll go ahead and go back. So it says post your ad, but if I refresh the page, the text is gonna change to post ad, see that? So you can adjust the text right here to anything that you guys would like, all right? Next, we have features. Features are essentially adding in features to your listings like compare, quick review, and then also adding to the favorites. If you go to the website and you scroll down right here, you're gonna see that these are the features, quick preview, compare, and add to favorites. For example, I'll click on the compare option right here, and now users can actually compare, right? So they can compare this one and this one and this one, and then click on compare. So I do love this, you know, I do love the simplicity, yet also it's very dynamic, you know? So here we have these two, and then there's also this one over here. So they can go back and compare these side by side. Pretty cool, right? So let's go back. So that is pretty much what that does. And also the message system, this enables messages on the user page. So if a user actually clicks on one of these ads right here, so here's the ad page and you'll see here, we can actually chat and send something to this specific user. You guys can also email them as well. So if you wanna send them an email, you can also go that route. But either way, they will receive the message. If you want to take that off, you can take it off if you want, but I think it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave it on. So I'll click on save changes. So now let's talk about the search. So you guys can exclude specific things from searches. So this actually gives you a little bit more flexibility and control over your search bar. So for example, if I want to exclude computers from the search, I can go ahead and type in the taximony or the category right here. Now this option right here is actually really cool. I do recommend that you guys have this checked and let me show you guys what that does. So suggest terms. It'll actually suggest specific terms that might relate to their search. So let's say I'm, I'm looking for something and I'll type in cars, right? But notice as I type cars, it's actually going to pull up all of the categories and taxonomies that we're gonna create in just a little bit. So I do like this. I feel like this makes things a lot easier and convenient for your users. And actually when I click on the actual uh, cars, it actually does the search and takes me directly to that specific uh, ad page. So it is very convenient and useful to actually have that. So I do like these suggest terms. You can also do ad descriptions. So I'll go ahead and show you what this does. So the ad descriptions will actually pull up descriptions from specific ads. So essentially it's the same thing, right? But they're gonna get a little bit more, um, you know, you see how, how it says bright dog. That's probably because we have created an ad that says bright dog in it. So the difference is, is that this one's going to use the ad descriptions and this one will suggest specific terms or taximonies. You could use both if you want, but I think that suggest terms is a little bit more accurate. So I'm gonna check that one for now and then I'll click on save changes. Okay, so here's the SEO page and I do recommend to have pretty URL selected and make sure this is checked. Now what this is gonna do, it's going to actually generate and build links so people can search for specific things in the search results based off what you have created. I do like this approach and once we actually do create categories, you can actually create descriptions for those categories and that will filter and hit the search engine. So we will create uh, categories and everything in just a bit, and you guys can add description to those categories and taximonies as well. So let's go ahead and click on save changes. This will make a lot more sense once we actually get to the custom field section, but we're gonna save that section for a little bit later because I just wanna get through these general options. Next we have maps. 
If you guys choose to have Google Maps, you guys can embed the API key here. I will show you guys how to do this, but I actually don't recommend Google Maps. And I'll explain why a little bit later once we create the ads. Because with Google Maps, you can't actually have users select the location when they're building the ad. That is one big drawback with Google Maps. Here is social. You guys can go ahead and enter in your social profiles right here, like your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram. Now these actually propagate when the user actually uh, uses the social icon element for Elementor. So here is the social profiles. And if I drag and drop this, you'll see these propagate, right? Now these propagate from these specific settings right here. So the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, you'll see we just added the number sign. And over here, you'll see all of them propagate. So if you do wanna add more of the social icons, this is the actual place where you would input the information and the element pulls it from the general settings. Okay, makes sense? All right, cool. Next, we have currency. If you guys do wanna change the currency, right here, click on edit, you guys can adjust the currency right here. So you can change this to USD, you can change the sign. And I guess some places they put the sign in the back of the dollar or in the currency, I have no idea. So I'm just going to leave it as before because for the American dollar, we put the sign in front of the dollar amount. Next, we have numbers. Uh, I don't really know why this is here. I guess some countries use periods. I think in Eastern Europe, they use periods. Uh, in America, we use commas. So I'm just gonna leave this as standard. Reviews, here we can go ahead and enable reviews. Now, I'll be showing you guys how to add reviews and design this when we actually customize and design the ad page. So make sure that you guys do have reviews enabled. Make sure this box is checked and then click on save changes there at the bottom. I'll explain more about this once we actually go into the template section and we add a element for the review element. Okay, Twilio, I'm not gonna cover this just because I don't really use this service. And then also we have other, these are just some other basic general options like deleting images or disabling the help button and so on and so forth. So the basic options with Listavo are pretty basic, right? So now that we covered the basic options, now let's go over here and click on design. Now the design is actually a little weird. So all this really does is open up the Elementor page builder. <laughs> That's all it does. And it actually opens up the global fonts and colors where you can adjust your website globally. So it's supposed to actually open up this section right here under the site settings and global fonts and colors. So I think that's what it was supposed to open up because you'll see at the top it says global open, but uh, it didn't do it, but this is what it was trying to open up. If you want to globally change your colors, you guys can do this here where you can say, you know what, I don't wanna use this yellow, I wanna use like a pink, a pink scheme or purple scheme. And then all the colors that are applied to primary two will then change to that specific color, right? So uh, I'll go ahead and click on update just to give you guys an example, even though that's a really ugly color. Here, I'll go back to editor. And then you'll see that all the colors that were assigned to that specific primary two have now changed. And it's gonna change throughout the website, right? Really, uh, that hot pink just killed the website. <laughs> It really did, right? But uh, we can always go ahead and change it back. So that's what it's referring to. It's referring to the global fonts and colors, and you can adjust it all from right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change mine back. All right, I think we're using this color right here, right? It's like a, there we go. I think that's it right there. Here's the actual number if you guys can't get to it. So I just took a wild guess. I don't think that's the same exact color, but it's pretty close to the one before. Okay. So that is pretty much it. That's all the design does. It just opens up the global fonts and colors for your websites, right? Okay, makes sense. Let's go to the next one, user panel. So this part's referring to the actual login page. And to get there, I'll open up a new tab right here. So when a user goes to the page for the very first time and goes to something like register, here are some general options. And you guys can choose to adjust this like for the privacy policy, you guys can adjust that. And then also for the login, there are some options for the login page as well. So you can change it, like I accept the privacy policy, you can change that to something else. And then here they have some other basic general options which you can set. Next we have moderation. So once a user actually creates a ad, you can choose to moderate it. So for example, here we have 
moderation enabled. So when a user actually goes over here and actually creates an ad, you can choose to moderate it. So let me give you an example. Here we have these specific ads right here, right? But when a user actually says, I'm gonna post a new ad, and then they go through the process and create an ad, this will then be moderated where it'll have to be confirmed on our end. So you can choose to enable that right here in the options. Okay, next let's go over here to user. So once a user actually creates an account, you can choose for them to require to verify their email. This is actually very useful because this will prevent spam. A lot of the users might register on your website and will be bots. And if you have this checked, it will force them to go to their email and confirm their email, which usually prevents bots and spam. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. So next we have private accounts and then we also have business accounts. Now, when you actually create an account, the users can choose to create a private account or a business account. And there are some options here if they choose a private account or if they choose a business account where you can say, you know what, you have to give us the full name of company representative, the company information, and so on and so forth, right? Now, let me go ahead and show you guys where this actually shows. So I'll go ahead and open this up right here. And here you'll see that I clicked on the register button, right? And right here, you're gonna see private and business. So this is just uh, an option if you wanna add it, but if you choose to have you know, the option for private and business, then that's where you're going to basically uh, control all these options. If you guys do want to disable the business account, you guys can uncheck this, and this will basically make it so that option does not display. So it's really up to you. If you want the options for users to have private and business accounts, here you can adjust the settings for privates and also business accounts. All right, makes sense? All right, cool. Next, we have social authentication. I'm not gonna go through social authentication because they actually change their page so much it makes these tutorials outdated. So if you guys do want to go ahead and learn how to add social login to your website, I do recommend to go to Fiverr. So if you guys go to Fiverr, you can do something like Facebook login for WordPress or something. And these guys will do it for you for like five bucks, right? So, uh, well, this guy will do it for $10, right? So they're, they're gonna add in the social login to your website. And there's tons of these guys that'll do it for you. Um, the only reason why I don't do it is because they change their interface so much that um, the video gets outdated in like a matter of months. So uh, I'll just refer you guys to Fiverr if you guys do want to add in social login to your website. Next, we have reCAPTCHA. reCAPTCHA is actually pretty simple, right? This will actually help prevent spam for your contact form. Now, you guys will need to have a Gmail account, and all you gotta do is click on this link right here, and all you gotta do here is just go ahead and just click on the checkbox right here for version three and enter in a domain. So for label, this is gonna be classified website. The domains, tutorialdomain.com, then I'll click on submit. And that's it, we got our keys. They made it really simple, I do love it, you know? So we're gonna copy this. Let's wait, the site key, right? Site key, we'll paste it there. And then the secret key, we'll also copy that. And we'll paste the secret key in there and then we'll enable this. This actually does help prevent spam from your contact form. You're gonna get a lot of spam in, in your contact form, guys. So I do recommend add a reCAPTCHA in order to get rid of those um, spammers. Lastly, we have redirects. So once a user registers, it'll take them to their ads page. If you wanna change that to another page, you can do it here. So after login, it'll take them to basically their account page. Your ads page is the account page. So I would leave these all standard. Lastly, you'll click on save changes. All right, we are cruising. Okay, so now let's go to the next section. So monetization. Now this is gonna allow people to purchase packages and use credit cards and payment gateways on your website. And we're gonna to come to this at the last section. So we're gonna skip this and we'll do this a little bit later once we have covered the other general options. Next, we have templates. Okay, so the template section is essentially the theme builder. A theme builder, in case you guys are not familiar, it's essentially a builder where you guys can build and customize every single page of your website. So here you can customize the ad page, the search results page, the ad page, the user page, the blog post, and even the blog, right? So let me give you guys an example. Now layout, this is actually referring to the header and the footer of your website only, not parts of the website, only the header and footer. So for the layout section, I'll click on edit, and this will allow me to design and customize the header and footer of the website. Okay, so here you can see that we can actually click on this menu and we can further design and customize it. 
So if you want to go ahead and change things, like I think this says a button, you can change it to a phone. You'll see now a phone displays, right? Um, so there are some customizable options here. Uh, we can go ahead and maybe ch check out the logo, do an inverse. Now we'll do standard, okay? Um, we can also change the icon. We can also change this from light to dark. You can also add a background color. So for style, if you guys do want to add like a background color to this, you can add like a background color, right? Or we can, um, you know, change the link color and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not going to go through all these options, obviously, because there's a lot here. But this is where you can fully design and customize the header and footer of your website. So I want to go back over here. I'm going to go back and clear that. Okay. You guys can also add in elements. So if you want to add in more elements here, we can go ahead and do that. Like you guys can add in a second row underneath the actual menu if you want to do that. But um, yeah, you guys can do that on your own free time. I'm just, you know, I'm just the middle guy here saying this is how you can design and customize the header. But I'm just going to right click and delete that. Okay. And then below that we have the footer. So here, if you click on the elements, you'll see they've added in the own elements right here. They have address version two. They have phone version three. Now this information is actually being pulled from the general settings. So let me show you guys where that's being pulled from. Right here under settings, you're gonna see that you have the public email, phone, and address. So that's where it's being pulled from. So you see public phone, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. So that's where that is being referred to. So a lot of these elements, they do pull from the general settings. Here we have a simple menu, right? So they put in a heading text, heading text, heading text. This is a simple menu elements. This is another simple menu. And then these are mini listings. Pretty cool, right? And then below that, they added in copyrights. And if you guys do want to add in more, you can just go ahead and add in more. Like for example, actually, let's use the other button here. Let's use their button. Here we go. I like their button better. It looks nicer. Yeah, maybe you can add in like a subscribe or something, you know? And then this can go to the subscribe page or this can go to the contact page or, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, you guys get the point, right? And then here we can adjust the button position and move it around or something like that. So that's how you guys can design the footer and the header of your websites. And then once you're done, you'll click on updates and then the changes will be applied. And then once you guys are done, you'll click on update and then changes will be applied to the entire websites right? But I'll just delete that and I'll click on update. So that's pretty much it for that specific section. So let's go back over here to templates. Now really quickly, the layout light, this is referring to any page that has the layout light settings on it. You can find that by clicking on the settings here at the bottom and then you'll see layout light, right? So the layout light is referring to this section here. The normal layout will actually change and it'll refer to the other style. So you can switch between layout lights and also layouts. I'm not really sure why they did that, but they just gave you two different options. I think it's because if you guys do wanna have a transparent menu, the other way will look much nicer. So I think it's basically created just for people who wanna have a transparent menu on the website. Okay, so that's pretty much what that refers to. Now let's go over here and go to add page. Now with the add page, there's three different styles on how you can approach your ad page. So let me show you guys where the ad page displays. So when a user actually clicks on the classified, this is the actual ad page. So this is what we're customizing as of right now. So they have three different styles. They have carousel, mosaic, and gallery. And I'll just click on preview, just open these up right here, just to give you guys an example. Okay, so the first one, this is the carousel layouts. And essentially, if there's multiple images, you can actually uh, swap between images and see all of them, right? And here they position everything a little differently, right? So this is the first layout. This is the carousel layout. The second one is the mosaic layout. So right here, you'll see we have this one image and then we have more areas where they can add in more images. It does say no photo because if we did add more, they would propagate right here. And then you'll see that's a, um, you know, same thing, right? They added in some content below that. And the very first one, this is the general layout, which is the gallery layout. Now the gallery layout will allow people to swap between images like right here. If we had more, it would just basically allow people to just go between different images. Now the great part is you guys can actually custom design every single page and have it any which way you want, right? 
So for the gallery, let's go ahead and adjust the gallery. So right here, I'll click on edit page and we can actually fully design and customize the gallery page. Okay, so here is the actual builder and this is where we can actually build the page from scratch if we choose to do so. But really quick, I'm gonna go ahead and close all these right here because I just wanna see the elements from Listivo, okay? So you guys can go ahead and design this, right? Let's say, for example, you wanted to add a button somewhere under here, right? And this button will go to like your contact page or learn more or something, right? And then I'll put this somewhere like in the middle or the right or whatever. You guys can add in elements and build this page from scratch. I'll delete this as well. Now the ones that are important are like the actual, um, the description, right? So the ad description, these are very important because this is what propagates the actual description for the ad. So next we have the features. Now, later on, we're gonna create attributes and these are actually being pulled from the attributes that we can create. So notice here how we put like make and then we'll put like property size. You'll see how this all changes, right? So uh, we'll talk more about this when we create custom fields. This will make a lot more sense once we create custom fields but once we do create custom fields, we can then apply it to this specific page. So let's go back over here. And then here is the, I guess the video, right? So we have the add embed field and you guys can find these elements right here. So add, here, I'll go ahead and pause that, add embed field. So this is what it's referring to and you can move this around, right? If you wanna, you know, put it up here, like you can throw it up there and then delete this one if you wanna do that, right? but I'll go ahead and just delete that, okay? And then so on and so forth. So there are a lot of elements here that you guys can add to your specific profile. Now, one that I talked about earlier was the reviews. Remember earlier how we said we we're gonna come back to the reviews? So this is the review section and you guys can choose to actually delete this or you can add them. For example, if you wanna add the ad reviews, I'll type in ad reviews and then we can drag and drop it and then they'll display right here. But in order for them to actually propagate, you need to make sure that under these settings that you have it enabled. So over here, reviews, you wanna make sure that the reviews is checked so that people can actually leave reviews for your actual uh, vendors. Maybe we can even customize this page and let's see if we can add them over here, right? Add reviews. Oh, it's interesting. Maybe we can add it there. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe that looks a little cluttered. I'm not really sure. Um, they do have some settings here. Only login users can see it, right? So, yep. Yeah. But um, you guys can go through all these elements and there are tons of them to go through where you can add in anything that you guys would want. You can move this over here. You can move that over there. You know, you can just be as customizable as you want. That's why I love this theme. You know, it's a theme builder that you can build this any which way you want. So you're not limited to their default templates like most themes, okay? But what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna go all the way back and we're just gonna leave it standard, okay? So that's essentially how you guys can design and customize the page right here. Now, this is referring to the gallery page. Now, if you guys do wanna select the Mosaic or the Carousel page, you guys can also select those and then further design and customize those pages. So you can pick any layout and then you can also customize that specific layout as well. So essentially, you can pretty much mix and match these any which way you want. So it, I love the uh, flexibility there. So that is the ad page. Now we have the search results page. Okay, so let's say someone searches for something. Here, I'll click on search. This is the default page that we have selected when users search for something. So if you guys do wanna customize that, there's three different styles alternatively. And you guys can also design those pages as well. So here I'll click on the first one, which is the sidebar. Now we have the map and then we have the horizontal. So this is the first one and this is the one that we are currently using. We also have the map. Now, in order to actually have the map right here, we, need, we do need to add the Google Maps API. And this will actually showcase and propagate the actual map on the actual page. We'll add the Google Maps API a little bit later, but uh, for right now, I'm just showing you guys how you can select it. And lastly, we have the horizontal search. This essentially adds a search filter here at the top, and we can also search by most relevance or when they listed it from newest to oldest. And we can also change this from a list view to a grid view as well. So you do have a lot more flexibility with the horizontal view. It does get rid of the sidebar, so if you want to go that route, you guys can add it like that. 
Now, let's say, for example, here we have the sidebar search. Let's say you guys do want to keep this one. We can go ahead and edit this as well. So I'll click on edit. And now we can edit and design the sidebar search. Okay. Now, there are some limitations to this. Okay. So you'll see here, if I click on this, this entire element is being propagated. So you'll see that I can only add an element below this or I can add an element above this. But this whole section is using an element. But we can control this. So if you want to change this from car to row, we can change it like that. Um, we can, you know, change this to version one. I think that takes away the description, right? Version one, version two. Yeah, so it takes away the description. Yeah, and then there's these other fields like primary fields. Now the primary fields, this is a search filter. And if you wanna add in more filters or get rid of some, I'll go ahead and duplicate one. And I'll change this to something like category. We'll talk more about these a little bit later in the video. But for example, for right now, just select category. And now users can actually search by category, right? So essentially what you're doing here is you're just adding in more search filters for them if you choose to do so. So maybe I should take this one, put it up here and get rid of keyword. I think category and location is better, right? I think that's actually much more useful. Next we have sidebar fields, and this is where you guys can add in more sidebar fields or get rid of them. So here we have the category and then also the price. Now these other ones don't propagate because we don't have any that relates to this. So we don't have any property size. We don't have any contract type. This is just demo contents. And we'll talk more about this when we talk about custom fields. We also have sort by, which is this section up here. That's actually really cool. A lot of themes don't give you the option to actually change this, but the first one is most relevant. And you guys can actually pick between whatever one you want. So we have alphabetical price from highest to lowest, right? So if I change that. It'll now be from price to highest, right? To lowest, pretty cool, right? So we have most relevant, we have newest, then we have price highest, and you'll see that it just adjusts, right? So it is really cool that you can actually add in these elements and you can filter them and get a little bit more customizable. I do like that. Now on your own free time, you guys can go on this page, you can adjust all these settings to your liking. We will talk more again about the custom fields a little bit later in this tutorial, but, uh, also here, we can add in elements to the top. So if you guys wanna add in something here to the top, we can do that. Or you wanna add in an image here, like a Black Friday sale, we can put in something here. Maybe like a 404, I don't know. You guys get the point, right? Just, you can add in any image you want above that if you wanna, you know, customize it. So yeah, you guys can add in elements above this page and then also below this page as well right here. So if you wanna add in more, or you want to add in like a whole new section, you can add in a whole new section here and build it from scratch if you choose to do so. And this gives you a lot more customization options when it comes to building a website. So I'll go ahead and click on update here, and then we'll go back. So again, the search results page, you guys can fully design this page. And then we also have the print ad, here I'll click on preview. Now, if someone chooses to print something from their computer, this is actually the page where you can actually, um, you know, customize the print page. So if you do want, you know, to have it there, you can have that. You can also take off the option for prints, but that's just what the print ad is referring to. Also, we have a user page. So I'll click on edit. So this is the actual user page. And this page is the actual page when users actually go to an ad and click on the profile. So for example, if I click on the actual person posting the ad, it'll then take them to this specific page right here. Now that's what this page is referring to. Now this is an element called the user hero elements. So that's what this element is referring to. And you guys can design this. If you click on it, you can hide the address, you can hide the member since, and then also hide the social. You can also adjust the style. So if you wanna change the background here and the color and the fonts, you can do all of that here. And then if you wanna add more to it, of course, like I showed you guys earlier, you can simply drag and drop these elements. It looks like here they're using the hidden phone and then here they have the Viber one, right? So they have a Viber. And if we type that in there, Viber, you'll see that's all these elements right here, they're all being propagated. So they just essentially built this page from scratch and they just made it and they customized it for you guys. But you guys have the full flexibility to basically fully design and customize this specific page, right? 
So I'm not really gonna go into it again because I think at this point you guys understand that this is a theme builder and you can fully design every single page from scratch. And lastly, we have the blog post and the blog. So the blog post is the actual blog post itself. So once you actually create the blog post, you can go ahead and fully design this specific page. And then also there is the blog. Now the blog page is where your posts are displayed, right? So here you'll see all of the posts. We only have one right here, right? But you guys can add more right here. You can add in more filters or you can fully build and design this page. Okay, so now that we talked about the template section, I think at this point you guys understand, you guys can custom build every single page from scratch. Now let's move on and talk about the notifications. Now I'm gonna skip custom fields because custom fields is a little bit more detailed. So we'll get to that section in just a bit. But the notification are the emails that are sent to your specific users. So for example, we have a welcome email. I'll click on edit. And here you can change the welcome email. So we have welcome email, welcome to our websites, and you can add more to this. So like, thanks for being a new member. And right here, you can put the name of your website or support team or whatever else. So once you guys are done, editing that so you'll click on save changes and you guys can go here and you guys can modify all these emails so when someone pays for something or if there was a new message sent these are the emails that are being sent right here now you guys can also click on add new notification and you guys can create custom ones from scratch so this will be like ad will expire very soon this is going to be an email and right here I'm gonna find the ad will expire soon, right? Add notification. And then this is the email that's gonna be sent when the ad expires soon. So here, number of hours before expiration, I'll put five hours. And then your ad will expire. And then over here, we're gonna put the actual code here. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna copy this right here. I'm gonna paste it there. So it's gonna say their first name, right? Your ad will expire soon. Please renew before it disappears. Okay. And I want to give them the ad URL. So I'm going to link them the ad URL. Right. So they can click on the actual URL and then thanks. Daryl Wilson. And I'll click on save changes. All right, cool. So now you'll see the ad will expire very soon. And then we can always edit it there a little bit later. So that's how you guys can adjust the notifications sent from your websites. Here is the system messages like confirmation email, reset password. And of course, you guys can adjust these to your liking. And you guys probably should because a lot of this says like best wishes CEO or something else. So you do want to go through all of these and change it to something that represents your business. Here we have logs. So any logs will be shown right here. And then also mail. This is the actual footer of your website. So this is actually important. You want to put your name, your email, and then probably your company. So like Patty Wackers, LLC, Daryl Wilson, howdy at DarylWilson.com. Okay, so that is the notification summed up. On your own free time, feel free to go through all of these and adjust it to your website name or adjust it to your company or business name. Next, we have the translate and rename. Okay, so now we have the translation and renaming. Now this theme did things a little weird. So there are some terms right here where you can translate. Now the issue is, is that I don't really know where these propagates. And I looked at the documentation guys and they don't really tell you either. In fact, they sort of just brushed it under the rug and just uh, went into custom fields. Like they barely mentioned it here. So I'm, I am the middleman here and um, these do show up in various parts of the WordPress theme. Now, if you want, you can go through each of these one by one and translate them to your language in order to guarantee that the website is fully translated. However, I have a much, much better alternative than using their translate and rename. We're gonna use a plugin that you can use to translate your entire website, and I use the same plugin on my website. So under search plugins, type in G Translate. This is an amazing plugin, and this can instantly translate all of your websites and all of the parts of your website with just a matter of one or two clicks. Here is the plugin that I want you guys to install. Go ahead and click on install, and then activate it. It's Translate WordPress with G Translates. This is a great plugin, okay? Once you install that plugin, you'll scroll down to settings, 
and then you're gonna see G Translates. Go ahead and click on G Translates. Okay, now right here we have some options where you can adjust the look and feel. So I wanna translate this from English to any other language. So this plugin has tons of languages and they're fully dedicated to actually translating your websites. Now I actually do have the pro version of this. You don't have to get it if you don't want to, but the pro version will create more permalinks and translate those permalinks as well. Now you can choose to show this in the menu, but I don't think this theme has an integration for it. So we can just use it at like the top left or the bottom right. So what we're gonna do is I will select the language at the top left, okay? And here are the multiple languages that you can choose for your users to translate it. So you can translate it from, you know, to Chinese, to Dutch, to Italian, to Portuguese, Russian. So you can go ahead and select the languages here. And then once you select those, you can then click on save changes. All right, once we've done that, now let's visit the website. Okay, now here at the top, you'll see that we can now select the languages. So we can go from Italian or Portuguese or any of these languages. And as you can tell, it's going to translate everything. So now everything's in Spanish and we can change this to uh, Thai. Then we'll go ahead and try something else like German. You'll see everything translates to German. So now you'll see that everything is written in German and you'll see everything has changed, the description, you'll see the dollar, even the small custom fields. So everything has changed specifically to German, even the small permalinks, our footer. But of course, things like New York cannot be changed to German, so it leaves it in English, right? And you can do this for your websites, and I think this is a better way to go, because I actually do uh, have this on my website, and this works much better than the theme defaults. So if you guys do want to translate your language, I do recommend to use a plugin like G-Translate. It is very helpful, and it can translate your website much better than the theme. So really quickly, let's go right back over here to translate rename. Okay, so we pretty much covered that. Now let's go ahead and talk about the advanced options. The advanced options are basically setting the pages. So for example, the blog page should be the blog page. The register page should be the register and login page, right? And you can adjust these specific pages here. Next, we have tools. You guys can check expired ads. You guys can connect your terms and service, or you guys can clear the images on your website, but I would not do that. That's very, uh, you might reset your website by doing that. So just be cautious. Then we have terms importer. We will come back to this a little bit later, and this can actually help with locations. So we will talk about this a little bit later after custom fields, all right? So that is pretty much it for the general settings. As you guys can tell, the general settings are pretty useful. They're very simple to navigate. And after probably just, you know, 10, 15 minutes, you get to definitely get the hang of it. So now that we talked about the general options, now let's move on to custom fields. So over here, I'll click on custom fields. Now, in order for us to fully understand what's going on here, I'm going to delete all the custom fields and we're gonna start completely from scratch. Now in doing so, parts of your website might break. So like the search right here might break because we're gonna delete location and we're also gonna get rid of spam categories. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start from scratch just so we're on the same page. After I teach you guys how to actually use the custom fields, we are then going to load a template again and I will explain how everything works. But you first need to understand the basics of custom fields. Now, before we begin, I'm going to delete all the custom fields and we're gonna start from scratch. Now to do that, I'll click on delete and press enter. Delete and press enter. And I'm gonna do this about 20 times. And I recommend you guys do the same. All right, great. So get your thinking caps on guys. This is the part of the video where things are gonna be a little weird. So get your thinking caps on. This is probably the most important part of this tutorial. So up here, let's click on create a new field. Now, what are custom fields? Well, custom fields are essentially categories. However, custom fields can also be texts, they can be locations or attachments or salaries. But to get started, we're just gonna start with the basics. So, so first let's create a category. Now we're gonna select taximony for our category. A taximony is basically a custom post type that allows us to categorize specific attributes. So for name, we're gonna put category and then I'll click on add fields. Okay, now this stuff right here might be a little hard to understand, but for now, I just want you guys to select these and I'll explain these as we go. So I'm gonna make sure these are all selected and then we're gonna scroll down and then we're gonna click on save changes. 
Okay, so we have a category, right? But what's inside of our category? We need to create specific categories inside of our category, right? Over here, you're gonna see that we now have under and, we now have our category right here. So I'll click on category. Okay, so within our category, we're gonna have specific post types. The first one is we're gonna select cars, right? So we're gonna select cars. Now we need to ask ourselves, what kind of cars are we gonna add? Well, we also need to add these here. So we're gonna create something called child categories. Now we're gonna put BMW, all right? And for parent category, I'm gonna select cars. Okay, add a new category. Now we're also gonna add in Honda, create a new category, and then also Toyota. And this is also gonna be within cars. So on the right side, you're gonna see we have cars, and then under cars, we have Toyota, Honda, and BMW. So this right here is a category, and these are subcategories. So now let's create another category. So we're gonna create another one called services but this one is not gonna be part of the cars. So we're gonna make a new category, services. Then I'll add a new category. Now, what kind of services are we gonna offer? Well, I'm gonna put handyman services, but for parent category, we're now gonna select services. I'll add a new category. And then over here, we're gonna add in something else, legal, add a new category, and then also we're gonna add retail. Okay, so now we have two categories. We have services and we have cars. And then here are subcategories for our main category. I'm gonna add one more category and this is gonna be real estate. So before I do that, I'm going to go to name and type in real estate. And then I'll add a new category. So for real estate, I'm gonna put houses but I wanna make sure that this is under real estate. Okay. We have apartments. We have apartments. And then we have rooms. Okay. All right, so here we have real estate, we have services, and then we have cars. So we have three categories, and then we have our subcategories for our main categories. All right, so we created some categories and subcategories. Now, before going any further, let's take a look at the website and see what we've done. So up here, I'll click on post ad, and then I'll scroll down, and here you're gonna see category. So we now have cars, and under cars, we now have BMW, Honda, and Toyota. For the real estate, we now have apartments, houses, and also rooms. And then for services, we have handyman, legal, and also retail. So that's how we can create categories and subcategories. But now I wanna create attributes for the services category because is this for business or is this for personal? And also, what is the hourly rate? Let's add some attributes for the services section. So let's go ahead and go back over here. So now we're gonna go back to custom fields. We're essentially gonna create more attributes for our primary categories. So under list of a panel, I'll click on custom fields. All right, and now we're gonna add a new field right here. So for add a new field, I'm gonna put price right here. Now, instead of the actual taximony, what we're gonna do is we're now gonna put price. And then I'll click on add fields. We're then gonna scroll to the bottom and then click on save changes. So now we created price, but I wanna apply price to the services section. So to do that, we're gonna go over here to edit under the category section. Now, since I've checked all these boxes right here, you're gonna see we now have the option to select services. Now, let's first explain what these are before we go on any further, just to prevent any confusion. So here we have multi-level. What is multi-level? So multi-level allows you to create a hierarchy. So here you'll see we have electronics and under electronics, we now have specific subcategories. This is an example of multi-level. It allows you to select multiple levels under electronics. Now, if you do not have that checked, the difference is you'll now see that under the category section, you can only select electronics and there are no other subcategories. So by selecting multi-level, you can then create a hierarchy of terms. In this specific case, you can see we've created a hierarchy, right? We have cars and under cars, we now have price. So that's what multi-level does. And then we have multiple values. Multiple values allows you to select multiple values at one time. For example, here you'll see that we have this features page. 
And under features, we can select multiple values at one time. However, for the taximony section, you'll see we can only select one. So the multiple values allows you to select multiple values at one time. So if you guys do create multiple attributes, you can have users select all of them at once instead of actually selecting them one by one, like something like this. So that's an example of the multiple values. The next one is field dependency. So what is that? Field dependency allows you guys to create the actual board right here. So here you can see we're using a cross-reference of multiple level, right? We have the bus, which actually controls some of these categories. However, the field dependency can say, well, if I select bus and something else, now only specific attributes can show. For example, on this chart right here, you guys can see that under bus, mileage will show up, transmission will show up, field type will show up, and VIN will also show up. However, truck features and motorcycle features will not display for bus because they're just not relevant. So by doing this, you can make your search results a lot more accurate. So let's go back to the search page really quick. If you guys didn't get this on your first try, don't worry about it. It took me about two days to fully understand everything that this developer was trying to do. So let's go back to the actual page. So let's take a look at what we've done so far. We now have cars and now we can add price to these three attributes. So the next one is field dependency on term pages. Make sure that you guys do have this checked. So what this does here is that it actually makes it so you can add specific attributes to subcategories. For example, I'll go over here to our categories, right? And let's say for instance, I go over here and I click on retail. I'll click on edit for retail. You can actually select specific attributes for specific subcategories. So right here, I can also check on price. So you can basically mix and match specific attributes for specific subcategories if you choose to do so. So let me walk you guys through this before we get too technical. And now I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna apply price to my services only, not to my real estate and not to my cars. So when I do that, I'll go over here and I'll click on save changes. Okay, you guys with me? Now let's take a look at our website. Okay, so on the top right, I'm gonna click on post ad. I'm gonna scroll down and here you can see we can put an ad name. Now we can see our categories, right? So we have cars, real estate, and then right here, if I click on services, you'll now see a price propagates. So here I can select a specific uh, attribute, right? So we have uh, legal, retail, or handyman. So now that we've done this, we can further extend and add more on this. So maybe you want to ask somebody, well, is this for business or is this for personal use? Let's add in another field here asking if this is for business or personal use. But I don't wanna have it as a field like this. I wanna have it as a checkbox. So let's add it. Let's go back over here and we're gonna add in a new field. This will be work type. So work type, and then I'll click on add field. So for right here, I wanna select multiple values because we're gonna select the business and also personal use. So I want the user to be able to select multiple values. So maybe they can select both if they want. So I'm gonna check the box, scroll to the bottom, and then click on save changes. So we now created a work type. So we need to add in the categories under work type. So over here under ads, you're gonna see work type now propagates. So I'll click on work type, and then we're gonna add in business, right? Or we're gonna add in personal. And then I'll click on add new work type. So we have business and we also have personal. Maybe we can add in another one. This can be something like seasonal, right? And here we go. So now that we have these three attributes, now let's assign it. So over here, we'll go back to custom fields. And then under category, we're now gonna go back and click on edit. Okay, so you'll see we have work type and I don't want work type to apply to cars or real estate, but I do want it to apply to services because this might be something short term, this might be for business only, or this might be for personal. So I'm gonna select work type, scroll to the bottom, and then click on save changes. All right, so now let's take a look at what we've done so far. Here I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page. Okay, so we have our ad name and this will be like, I don't know, Daryl or yeah, Daryl. And then for category, if I go down over here to services and I click, 
you'll now see we have a new section work type and then we have three checkboxes. So a user can go ahead and select the specific subcategory, right? They can put a price and they can say, well, this is only for business or this is for personal or hey, this can be for all three. So you can go ahead and create specific attributes for work type. As you guys can tell, you can get really customizable here and add as many fields as you want for any type of category. So now let's get a little bit more advanced. Let's say for example, under the legal, maybe this is for business or this is for personal use for legal reasons. However, legal would not apply for handyman or retail. So what we can do here is we can create another category to propagate if the user selects legal. Now there's two ways to do this. We can either create another one of these, right? Like before, or we can create another category for our subcategory. So let's do that. Let's pick your brain a little bit and let's try it out. So over here, we're gonna go ahead and create another category. So under the uh, ads over here, I'll then click on category. And here I'll type in business. Now for parent category, I'm actually gonna select legal, right? So you can see I'm creating something for legal. Okay, add a new category. And then also I'm gonna do something else where I can say, well, not just for legal, but for personal use. So personal, we also have legal as well. Okay, and I'll add a new category. So as you can see right here, we have our handy, I'm sorry, we have our services, we have handyman and legal, and under legal, we now have personal and business. So let's see what that's done so far. Let's go back over here and let's refresh the page. All right, so over here, I'll go ahead and select services. And here we have handyman, but now let's select legal. So right here, I'll select legal. And now you'll see that we have another category. So we have business or for personal use. And they can select business or they can select personal use. So that's how you guys can create a, so that's how you guys can create categories for your subcategories. Okay, so we went ahead and we created the ad and you'll see that we have different categories and also work types. Users can enter in description and then post the ad. However, we need to actually create an area where users can upload images, video, and also attachments. So let's do that. It's really simple. So over here, we're going to now create custom fields for our own form. So right here, custom fields, and then I'll click on add a new fields. And this is gonna be something like gallery. And over here, we're gonna select gallery and then click on add a field. Now here you can select some options, like if it's required or not, you can select required. And here is the max file size upload at 8 MB. Here, click on save changes. We can also do the same for video. So up here, add a new field. Here I'll type in video. And then we're gonna select the embed and then click on add a field. You guys can choose to make these required if you choose to do so, but I'll just click on save changes. And lastly, we're gonna add attachments. Now this is not required and you guys don't have to do this. In fact, I don't recommend you guys do this, but I'm just explaining how to do this anyways, just in case some of the, you guys out there do want to. This will be attachments. And then for type, we're gonna select attachments. Here, click on add field. Here, click on save changes. And I think at this point, you guys know what to do by now, right? So we're gonna go back over here to category and now we're gonna add those three uh, attributes. So you'll see here under the gallery and video, I might want to add this to everybody, right? Because I want everybody to upload pictures or videos or have the option for attachments. So this is gonna be for everybody as well. So once I have those selected, I'll scroll to the bottom, then I'll click on save changes. All right, cool. Let's take a look here. So we have Daryl Wilson services and over here I'll put cars. So over here I'll select cars. And once I select cars, if I scroll down, you're going to see, we can embed a video. We have images and we also have attachments, right? Pretty cool. Now, if I select nothing, you'll see that they disappear. So these are dependent on these specific categories. Now, if I select real estate, same thing. They all propagate as well. Okay, so it works for our real estate. And then we're also gonna look at services. So services, you'll see, we still have our categories. We have our price, right? We also have personal business. We have the other one as well, where we have legal. This also propagates as well. 
And if we scroll to the bottom, you're gonna see that video gallery also displays and also attachments. It's because we've applied gallery and video and attachments to apply to all three categories. So I really hope this makes sense. I hope that you guys understand on how to use this. As you guys can tell, the conditional logic with this theme is amazing. You guys can pretty much do anything with this theme and I'm just barely scratching the surface. Okay, so now that we've done this for services, we're now gonna do this one more time and we're gonna do this for real estate. Okay, so we've pretty much done services and now let's go over ahead and take a look at real estate. Now with real estate, what I wanna include in real estate? Well, there's many examples. All right, so let's start with real estate. Now, the first thing is we wanna make sure that we can select a specific location for real estate, right? So let's add some locations. So over here, we're gonna to go to the custom fields and we're gonna add some locations. I'll click on add a new field and then we're gonna type in location. Now there is Google Maps API and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I think this is a lot more accurate. So uh, we're gonna create a category for location. Now within categories, we can go ahead and, I'm sorry, within the locations, we'll then click on locations. And here's where you guys can add in your locations. So you can add in California, right? We also have New York. Now I did mention something earlier in this video about the advanced section. So I'm gonna click on advanced here and just talk about it really quick. So here we have terms importer. So we also have location. What you guys can also do here is just add in a bunch of locations in bulk, right? So you can add in Los Angeles, you can add in specific cities, and this is where this term importer applies. And if I click on import, what this is gonna do, it's going to import all these locations onto my location taximony. Now, this is just optional. You don't have to do this, but this is just a quicker way if you wanna go that route. So now I'll go over here to um, the location and all those locations that I added, you're gonna see they are now added right here. So we have Los Angeles, Santa Clarita, and also Ventura. Now these are cities in these specific states, right? But obviously that's just an example. Now, if you wanna create subcategories for these, you can do that as well. Okay, so we created these locations and now we can add this to the real estate section. So over here, we'll go to our custom fields and then we'll go over here to category. And we're gonna scroll down and for locations, I want this to apply specifically to something like real estates. So I'll go to the bottom, then I'll click on save changes. All right, pretty simple, right? So we'll go over here and if I refresh the page, the location will also show up now. So over here, real estates, we have our category and then we also have locations. So this is another way on how you guys can add a little bit more information for real estates. Now we might also wanna add something like square footage or also bed and bathrooms, right? So let's do that. Let's go over here and I'll click on add a new field. And this will be something like property size. And for the type, we're gonna put number. Then I'll click on add a field. Now for the text after value, I put in the feet squared. I actually use the demo uh, for the square because I don't really know how to do it on my specific keyboard guys. So if you guys do know how to add the square, you guys can do that or you guys can use sample data from one of their demos. So once you enter in the square footage for the text after value, you'll scroll to the bottom, then click on save changes. Now let's add in something else like bedroom and bathroom. So over here, add new field. We're gonna put bedrooms, change this to number, scroll to the bottom, click on save changes. And then we're gonna do it again for bathrooms. So right here, bathrooms, number, and then we'll scroll to the bottom again and click on save changes. Now we need to assign this to the actual real estate. So up here, under categories, I'll click on edit. We're gonna scroll down and under real estate, I'm now going to add in property size, bedrooms, and bathrooms. I might wanna add in price as well, right? I think that makes sense. So let's add in price too. I'll scroll to the bottom, then click on save changes. All right, now let's take a look over here and see what we've done so far. I'll refresh the page. Let's go ahead now and click on the real estates. And now you're gonna see everything propagates quite nicely. So we have the category, right? We have the price, we have the location, right? We have property size, bedrooms, and bathrooms. And here they can enter in like 3000 square feet, three bedrooms, two bath in Nevada. And the price is, 
well, we can do something like houses, right? We'll put something like 580,000. And then here they can put description about the property, some videos, and also gallery and attachment. There is also a custom field for virtual walkthroughs. So I think they have one over here in the options. I did see it in one of their demos. So they do have, uh, I think it's embed and they have like virtual videos where people can upload like virtual videos of themselves there. So uh, you can always do that as well if you wanna add in like a video or like a virtual video or something like that. But that's an example of how you guys can also add in real estate to your classified ad websites. So that's pretty much it for the real estate. As you guys can tell, I'm just trying to get you guys warmed up and learn how to use the custom fields. Now there is one more, and this last one's actually a little bit more easier, and that is for the cars. So all we have to do is go over here to category, and we don't even need to actually mess with custom fields. So here we have the cars, and we have BMW, right? But what kind of BMW? Well, we're gonna put M4, oop, M4, and for the parental category, we're gonna put BMW, and then here is where they can enter and everything in. So we have the M4, we have the M5, right? And then also we have like the three series, all right, three series, and then also we have the four series. Okay, so you can see we have the four series, three series, M5, and M4 under BMW. So essentially, you're just creating categories for the subcategory. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, I know that could be a lot of work, but um, you know, that's, that's what it takes if you're gonna build this website. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look here now. For the cars, I'll click on cars, and then here we have BMW, and then here we have the actual categories. Now, what you might wanna add here is, you might wanna add in the price. So do you guys know how to do that? Well, it's simple. We just need to hit a checkbox under the custom fields category. So list of a panel, custom fields. We'll go to our category. And now we're just gonna add price for cars. And this will turn on the price for the cars. Scroll to the bottom, click on save, and I'll refresh the page. And here we go. So we have the cars, categories, three series, and then here they can enter in the price for the actual three series. So that's how you guys can create a sort of car classified ad website if you guys choose to go that route. All right, so now that we understand a little bit more about the categories and everything else, now let's talk about locations. Now there's two ways to do locations and I'll walk you guys through this step by step. This is actually a pretty important part of the video and I did have issues with locations, but after some documentation, everything worked just fine. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are now gonna create custom fields using locations. You guys can also use the Google Maps API, but I'll show you guys how to do that after I show you how to do this section. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a taximony for locations. Really quick, make sure that there is no locations. So if you guys do have locations, just delete it and we'll start from scratch. Okay, so add new fields. And we're gonna select locations here, or type in locations, and you wanna make sure that this is taximony, okay? So I know there is location here, but you don't wanna select that. You wanna select taximony, okay? And then click on add fields. Now for the search logic, make sure you change this to or, okay? Because if you put and, essentially you're basically saying they must select something else and this. So for the search logic, you wanna select or, and then click on save changes. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're now gonna create locations. So under ads right here, I'll click on locations and now we can create some locations. So I'll put Los Angeles or I'll put uh, what? New York, right? We'll put states, right? New York. Now, if you guys do wanna have subcategories for these locations, you need to turn that on in the options. So let me just walk you through if, to do that if you guys want to go that route. So for the locations, I'll click on edit. And then I'm gonna select multi-level, okay? So this will essentially allow me to create hierarchy of terms. And then I'll go to the bottom and click on save changes. Okay, now we can go back over here to the locations. And now essentially you'll see that we can now create, uh, I guess, subcategories for the locations. So for example, over here I can put Los Angeles. Add a new location. And then you'll see that now Los Angeles is underneath California. So this is useful if you guys want to add in like states by city or something like that. 
So that's how we can add in locations. Now that we add in these locations, we now need to apply them to the actual search. But there is one thing we need to do first. So over here under design panel, let's click on design. And now we're gonna click on design settings. And this is gonna open up the Elementor page builder. Now over here, I'll click on the hamburger menu and click on site settings. Next, I'm gonna click on add card. And then right here under row attributes, I wanna make sure I click on item one and for the field, I wanna select locations. Once that's done, I'll then click on update. So you guys need to do that before you add in locations to the search bar or else it will not propagate. So let's go ahead and close this. Okay, so now we have the search bar right here. So now I'll click on the pencil icon and right away you're gonna see that we have one category, right? but we can add in more fields. So right here, you'll see we have a category. We can change this to price. We can change this to locations and so on and so forth. But I wanna add in another one. So right here under add item, I'll click on that. And then for field, I wanna click on locations. And then you'll see that the location propagates. So right now I'll click on update. And let's just take a look here. Let's just see what's going on so far. So I'll go ahead and view the page. So here we have the category, right? We have cars, real estate, and then services. Now remember, we only have one ad because we only created one. And then here we have our secondary, which is the BMW. And then also we have the three series as well. For locations, we don't have any locations selected just yet. So I'll just go ahead and click on the search. And there you go. So we have the BMW for sale and everything works just fine. Okay, so now we have created the locations and category, and here you can see they can enter in the cars, the BMW, and also the three series. Now this is optional. You know, you guys don't have to do it like this because I know it's a lot of rows, so you can go either way. And then for locations, you'll now see that California, Nevada, and New York all propagate. There is nothing available because we did not assign any ads to these specific locations because we just created it. So that's how you guys can also add in locations to your search bar. So I'll go ahead and close that. And yeah, so that is pretty much it. Now, let's say for example, we go over here to post ad, the locations will also propagate over here for users to add in. So once you actually have people posting on your website, you'll now see locations pops up. So for example, they'll put cars, right? The BMW and then the three series. And then for locations, they'll put like New York or whatever state that you want. If I select California, you will then see that Los Angeles pops up because we have created the hierarchy of terms. And then right here, you'll just put in a price and then everything should be just fine. So that's how you guys can add in location with using. So that's how you guys can add in location using the taximonies. Now there is also the Google Maps. So I'll show you guys how to quickly add in a Google Maps API. It's really simple. Next, I'll come up here and click on Maps. And now we're gonna get a Google Maps API. Now I have a ton of APIs and all you gotta do is click on this link. If you guys do have a Gmail account, um, all you need to do is just log in with your Gmail account and then create an API. So right here, you'll see this first link. They'll actually take you directly where you need to go. So this is the actual one that you need. It's called the, uh, well, it's actually not the Maps JavaScript, but once you guys get here, just go ahead and click on Get Started. Now, once you guys get here, you'll see it's gonna take you to a bunch of different areas, right? And I have tons of different projects, but what you guys are gonna do is first create a new project. So this would be like WP Classified. And for location, we don't really need to select anything. So right here, I'll just click on Create. Now on the left side, you're gonna see APIs and services. Click on APIs and services, okay? And once you're here, you'll then click on Places. Under Places, you're gonna see Geocoding API. I wanna go ahead and enable this API. So once I enable this right here, I'm not gonna go over here and click on keys and credentials. I'll now click on create credentials and then I'll click on API key. All right, cool. So here is the API key. I'll copy this, I'll close it. Then I'll go back to our website and I'll just paste it in there. And then I'll click on save changes. And that's it. You'll now see everything starts to propagate right here where we can actually adjust this by initial location. You can change the zoom level so you want this like at three, you can put it at three. And then you can also change the default radius and then you can change this from kilometers to miles and so on and so forth, okay? So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. So now that we've entered this in, we can now go ahead and use this as a custom field if you guys don't wanna use taximonies. 
So over here, custom fields. Then I'll click on add new fields. And this will be location. And then I'll change this to location. Then I'll click on add fields. And then here you guys have some more options where you can you know, change this from roadmap to satellite or something else. But right here, I'll click on save changes. Okay, so we have two, right? We have locations using the taxonomy, and then we also have locations using the Google Maps API. Now, I would recommend to actually leave both if you do plan to actually use one and then the other. You want the taxonomy because this will display the actual uh, cities and categories for users to select. This right here will actually help for your search bar. So you can apply this location only for the search bar. So let's go back over here to our websites and let's open up Elementor. So I'll go ahead and click on this search bar, right? And here is locations. Now the locations for the taxonomy is with the S, right? But we can actually change that to just location. And this is gonna now use the Google Maps API instead. So I'll go ahead and click on updates. All right, so the first thing is I'll go ahead and select the category, right? And for location, you'll now see we have this new option that says my location. So I'll go ahead and click on my location. Okay, so it picked up my address right there, and then it'll go ahead and search for that specific location. Now, obviously, you guys saw that the address was in Thailand, so this is an area in Thailand because that's where I'm currently living, but you can see that it's actually picking up my location, so it'll then search for ads based off your location. Now, the last thing I want to mention is now that we've created all these different taxonomies and we've created different categories, you should go to your templates right here and add them to your sidebar. So the default contents disappeared for most people because uh, we got rid of all of the categories and the demo content. So for example, here's the search results and I'll click on the actual elements. And then here for the sidebar fields, you'll need to go ahead and add in the fields, right? So right here we have category, right? So our categories show up. And then over here, we can add in another one like price or you know whatever it is you're trying to offer, you can offer them right here. So we'll do locations. Okay, so you'll see locations pop up. And then here's our locations, right? So you guys will need to go through here. And if there's any other ones that you wanna create on your own free time, you guys can go ahead and create more custom fields for your sidebars for your search results page. Okay, so now that we talked about the locations, now let's quickly talk about the actual customer dashboard. So right here, you'll see I'm logged in. I can click on the admins, and then you'll see that we have a few options. So we have the settings. This essentially just allows people to add in their basic account information, like their profile image, their social links. Um, they can also change their password and other stuff like that. Here is the messages. Now, if a user actually tries to send you a message, it'll display right here for that specific user. If you guys decide to add in favorites, the favorites will be displayed right here. Here is the ads. Now, these are ads that you have currently posted and are currently active. So right here, you'll see that there is an active tab. There's 21 active and then there's two pending. If you guys do have an issue where you have a lot pending, you probably need to go and check them out and approve them. Now, once we do monetization, users will have the option to bump the ads directly from their dashboard. And we're gonna talk about that in the very next section. And then here is moderation. This is where they can see their current, um, you know, current ads and stuff like that. They can also take actions where they can delete them, switch to draft, or they can edit them. So uh, yeah, these are all basically just, you know, demo content and stuff like that. And then right here is the add new. And then this is where they can create a new ad from scratch directly from their backend. So overall, it is a pretty convenient interface and I do like it. So now that we talked about the actual dashboard, we know how to use the website and the custom field. Now let's talk about the monetization section. Okay, so in this part of the video, we'll be talking all about the monetization section for your classified ad websites. Now with classified ads, there's a few different ways on how you guys can make money. You guys can charge to run an ad, you can create a featured ad, or you can create subscriptions. Here's an example. Here we have a few different packages, right? These right here are one-time payments. And then we also have subscriptions at the bottom. For example, here we have a duration of 14 days and the ad can also be featured for three days. This package here, you'll see it allows bump ups. So what does all this mean? This right here is an example of a featured ad. It'll actually make the ad featured, so it displays first. You also have the bump up ads. The bump up ads are the ads that appear right next to the featured. So essentially, they are the highest ads that people can see. 
We also have subscriptions, right? And with subscriptions, you have a few different options. You can charge people by how many ads they can post. You can give them a duration of how long they can post ads. We also have the option to add in some benefits, such as you get featured for seven days, they get two bump ups, and then they can also bump up every 10 days. So we're gonna go through the different options. So there are two different options. You have the normal, and then you also have the subscription payments. Now we're gonna be integrating PayPal, and we're also gonna be integrating Stripe. So I'll be showing you guys how to integrate public payment gateways for this video. Okay, so let's get started. Now, the very first thing that you guys are gonna need in order to create the subscriptions and monetize your website is the WooCommerce plugin. So over here, let's go to plugins and click on add new plugin. Now, the great part is WooCommerce has tons of payment gateways. So if you guys do wanna integrate something else like Paystack or uh, Mercado Pago or something else, you guys can integrate those as well. So we're gonna type in WooCommerce. And here's the plugin we're gonna install, WooCommerce. So I'll go ahead and activate it. Okay, so now that we've installed WooCommerce, now let's create some pricing options. Now we'll come back to the payment gateways a little bit later, like Stripe and PayPal, but let's just go over the monetization. So over here, I'll click on monetization under list of O panel. Now I'm gonna click on enabled, and we're also gonna turn on subscriptions. Then I'll click on save changes. So now you're gonna see a few different tabs right here. We have packages, subscription, user subscriptions, and then we also have Stripe as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about packages. Now packages are basically just standard uh, pricing options for your website. For example, here we have three different packages. We have standard, featured, and then featured max. Here you can see what each package includes, right? So let's go ahead and edit one of these. So under the standard, I'm gonna click on edit. Okay, so the first thing is the name, right? And this is the standard package. The next is the display price. This is actually just displaying the actual price. However, the price right here is the actual price. So you can offer a sale and then charge them something else. Next, you have a label. A label is this right here where it says most popular. So if you wanna add in a label in order to increase engagement, you can do that. And then also you have the text. The text will appear right here. And this is something that you want to introduce, like, hey, this is a great package, or if there's something that you want to tell people, you can go ahead and add in some more text right below the choose this package. Here we have the highlight on pricing table. This will essentially highlight it. So you can see right here that this is highlighted. So this is the featured one right here, right? So it just, it just basically changes the color scheme and it emphasizes people to purchase this specific package. And then now let's talk about the rules, right? So we have the ad numbers. So how many times can a person post an ad? Well, they can post an ad one time on this website. How many days will this ad run? Well, you can put seven days, you can put 10 days or 20 days and so on and so forth, okay? So the next one is featured. This will essentially give users the ability to have featured ads they can post. This over here is an example of the featured. So it is the one with featured and they're highlighted at the way, way top. Next, we have the bumps numbered. This will essentially allow you to bump a number of ads. So you can bump maybe five ads or 10 ads or so on and so forth. And then below that, we have the bump intervals, which will allow the bumped ads to stay bumped for at least 10 days or however many days that you guys want to add there. Here we have the private and the business. So you guys can assign specific packages for specific users like private or business. But just to be basic here, I'm just gonna put any. And then once I'm done, I'll click on save changes. So that's an example of a basic ad. So these right here, you'll see are just the basic ones. And I do think they did a really good job here. So what I would recommend is for you guys just to actually edit these yourself and work off of this template right here because they did pretty good at creating these pricing tables. So now let's talk about subscriptions. So here we have a package standard and then a package featured. Now these two right here are subscriptions. So let's talk about the first one. I'll click on edit. So here we go. So we have the package standard, right? And this is $49. And again, we talked about label and text and all this other stuff. Now, the only really difference here is that with the packages, they give you the ads number. So this is basically limiting how many times a person can post on your website. They also do get additional benefits, like they get featured for seven days, and they also have a number of bumps. We'll talk more about how to activate the bumps in the user accounts, 
but they get two bumps included with this. If you wanna include more, you could say you get four bumps in your package and those are bumped for 10 days. So essentially it's the same thing as a basic standard package, except these are just subscriptions. So once you guys are done, we'll click on save changes. So that's pretty much the difference between the standard versus the package. These right here are one-time payments and the packages are subscriptions. So over here, we do have bump up. Now let's go ahead and click on edit here and I'll explain bump up. So bump ups are essentially allowing users to buy bump ups outside of the normal packages. Let me give you guys an example. All right, so here I'm logged into my accounts and you guys will see I'm on a free subscription right now. So this is a way where you can offer free memberships, but then encourage people to extend and bump up their ads. So you can see right here, this ad is currently extended, right? It's currently promoted right now and I can extend that or I can choose to bump this up. Now these right here are pending, so we don't have any option for this, but the other one's the same thing. I can promote this one, I can also bump it up and so on and so forth. Now the bump up is $3. The promote is where I would go on a package or I can purchase something for featured. But in this case, I just want to bump up this ad. So I'll click on bump up. And now I'm brought to the checkout page. And if I scroll down here, you'll see that I can bump up this ad for $3. Now I already went ahead and I added my payment gateways and stuff like that, but uh, this is exactly what your customers would go through. So they can just bump up the ad really quickly and then they can pay for this. And once they pay for it, it'll then be available in their accounts. Okay, so that is pretty much the bump up package, right? It just gives the ability to bump up all the ads. And I would encourage this because this is a great way to make quick money because this is a lot cheaper than the packages and people might wanna just promote a specific ad. So that's an example of bump up. We also have free. You guys can choose to have free memberships and this will allow people to register on your website for free. So you can enable this on your website if you choose to go that route. So in this case, we have enabled, but the benefits of free memberships and free ads are a lot more limited as you can tell. So for example, their ad will just post for three days, right? And they don't get anything, you know? So um, you can go that route, right? Where you can offer free memberships, but then say, you know, if you guys want the featured or the bumped, you'll have to pay for it in your accounts. So there are various ways on how you guys can approach this website. You can, you know, just create regular, regular packages, you guys can do something where you offer, you know, basic packages and subscriptions, or you guys can use the bump up with the free membership, right? So it really depends on how you want to approach your websites, right? And the last one is register. So if users do register for free on your website, you could give them some bonus package. And this is great if you're running ads on, you know, Facebook and you wanna say, you know what? I will give people a free package, right? And, you know, we're gonna give them some benefits this time, you know, so they can post 10 ads and, you know, they're given, you know, every ad runs 10 days and we'll give them, you know, some featured, right? We'll give them two featured and one bump up and then we'll give them a 10 bump up intervals. So you could offer something new for free users if you choose to go that route. But you do wanna make sure that if you do have register selected, then you also need to have free selected as well because this is for free users. Okay, so does that make sense? All right, cool. So now that we talked about the packages and everything else, now let's talk about the WooCommerce pages and also the payment gateways. All right, now before we go on to the actual payment gateways, I just want to make sure that you guys do have the WooCommerce pages installed. I did have many issues with the checkouts where um, you see this page right here is the default checkout with the theme. However, if you do things incorrectly, you'll run into checkouts like this where it doesn't look correct, right? Or if there might be an error or something like that. That's just because you need to make sure that you assign the correct checkout page to the uh, WooCommerce pages. So over here, let's go to dashboard and I'll do this from scratch just to go with you guys. So right here, you'll see all pages. And when you guys install the WooCommerce plugin, it should propagate the cart page and the checkout page. You guys will see I have two checkout pages. So one of them is not correct and the other one is correct. Right here, I'll view the current checkout page. And you guys will see that this is the checkout page that we assigned. And the other one is just like kind of like a, a default Gutenberg one. So this is the other checkout page. Now, if you guys do see this checkout page, this is the wrong checkout page. You need to assign the actual correct checkout page. So let's go over here to dashboard. 
Now, really quick, if the pages did not propagate for you whatsoever, you guys can repropagate the pages and then I'll walk you through how to assign it. So you'll go to WooCommerce and then you'll click on status. Under status, you're gonna go over here to tools and we're gonna scroll down so here we have create default WooCommerce pages. Now this doesn't delete the page, it just repropagates them, okay? Now this is if you guys are having checkout problems, which I did you know, on my end, so I just wanna make sure that you guys don't have the same problems that I did. So right here, I'll click on create pages. Now if the page is created for you guys already, you don't need to do this. If it did not, then you would need to generate the pages. Now over here, under settings, We'll go to the advanced section. Okay. Now for the checkout right here, if I type in checkout, you'll see that there are two checkout pages. Okay. So let's say for example, we did this one right here, right? 9054 and go to save pages. And let me just walk you guys through this really quick. I know this might be a little confusing here, but uh, let me just walk you guys through this. So if you guys did get a checkout page that looks like the Gutenberg editor, then that's the wrong page. So let me just walk you through this. I'll go ahead and click on the post ad. Here I'll put buy the package. Here's my packages. I'll choose this package and then I'll click on next. So this right here is the wrong checkout page, okay? So I just wanna be very clear. Now, your customers can still check out on this page, right? They can click on place order, but it's very distorted and it is the wrong one. So this is a default uh, Gutenberg editor checkout page. So if you do get this checkout page, you need to assign the other checkout page. So right here, 6715. And then of course you can delete the other page because you no longer need it, right? Okay. Okay, so I'll go back over here and I'll go to the same process again. So I'll go ahead and post an ad, buy the package. I'll choose this package, scroll down and click on next. Now you'll see that this is the correct checkout page, right? So you'll see that they can go ahead and check out. Here is the order and then they can pay with credit card and also Stripe. So I just want to make sure that you guys don't run into that same problem like I did. I actually ran into that problem. I had to go to support and they helped me out and it was just a small error. Okay, so now that we've done that, now let's add some payment gateways. So over here, we're gonna go to plugins and click on add new plugin. Okay, now the first one that we're gonna do is Stripe. So we're gonna type in Stripe. The good thing is that since we're using WooCommerce, you guys can use any payment gateway you'd want, but Stripe and PayPal are probably the most popular ones. So right here, you'll see WooCommerce payment gateway. Make sure that you guys install this one and then activate it, okay? Once you guys do that, we'll then also integrate the PayPal payment gateway. So I'll type in PayPal. And here is WooCommerce PayPal payments. I'll go ahead and also install this and then I'll also activate this plugin. All right, cool. Now really quick over here under WooCommerce, let's go ahead and click on settings. Next, I'll click on payments. Now we wanna enable this payment gateway. So you wanna make sure that Stripe is currently enabled right here. And also you guys can also enable PayPal as well. So I'm gonna enable PayPal and also Stripe. You guys will see that I've already done this before because I already did this before the tutorial because I wanted to make it um, you know, very accurate and step-by-step. -step. So make sure that you guys do turn those, those two on, scroll to the bottom, and then click on Save Changes. All right, cool. Now we're first gonna integrate Stripe. Now I know if you guys are familiar with Stripe, you might think this is it, but there's actually two steps you have to do with this theme. So uh, just bear with me here. So right here, I'll click on manage. All right, so the first thing it's gonna do is prompt you to connect your Stripe accounts. Now, in case you guys are not familiar, Stripe is a free payment gateway. It's very simple to use. And all you have to do is just basically make an account and then you just connect your bank account and you're all set. So you will need to go to the startup process and sign up with Stripe. And once you guys go to the process and sign up with Stripe, you'll then be prompted in your dashboard right here. So this is the current Stripe dashboard. And here you'll see that I have an account. I have a lot of test transactions and stuff like that. Now I actually use Stripe as well. So uh, over here, I'll just show you guys my accounts just to make sure that you guys know I actually use this service. 
So this is my current live website, right? And you'll see we're making a lot of sales, you know, and this is over the last uh, two to three months. And you'll see that we have a lot of payments and stuff like that. So this is an example of what you will see if you guys, you know, have an account and you're making money and stuff like that. But um, what we're gonna do is go to my demo accounts, right? So make sure you log into your account right here. Now, once you guys go through the process and you make your account and everything's validated, all you need to do is just make sure you're logged in on the same browser and then we're gonna go over here and then we're just gonna connect it. Now, since we're on the same browser, it's going to integrate everything automatically. So right here, I'll click on connect an account. Next, I'll go ahead and click on my demo business and then click on connect. All right, so you'll see now Stripe is enabled on the website and there is one thing that we need to do. So if I click on edit account keys, you'll see we're missing a webhook secrets. All we gotta do is take this right here and then we're going to add in the webhook. So I'm gonna copy this and let's go back to Stripe. So over here, I'm gonna click on the developers and then I'll click on webhooks and then I'm gonna add an endpoint. And for the endpoints, I'll go ahead and paste this and I'll explain what I'm using this for. So this is, this is for connecting payments. I don't know why, but I can't space anything. That's really weird. Oh, there it goes. Oh, never mind. I can't. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, sometimes things get weird. All right. So here we go. All right. And then for events, I'll click on select events. And we need to pick three events. Now over here is their documentation. So we need to select checkout session completed, right? So we're going to search for it. Checkout session completed. I'll check that box. You also need to find invoice paid, right? So invoice paid, invoice paid right here. And then lastly, we need to find invoice payment failed. Invoice payments, let's see, invoice payments failed and this right here. And then I'll add the events. Once we add the events, I'll then click on add an endpoint. Now here we have the signing secret. So you do need to reveal this and then copy this. And then we're gonna paste this in the website and then we're done. So we'll go back over here. I'll paste in the webhook secrets and then click on save live keys. Now, if it worked correctly, it's going to say enabled. If something went wrong, it'll still say it like in yellow and you'll have to try to find out what went wrong. But you'll see on my end, once you enter the same exact credentials, uh, the webhook is now set. Now below that, you're gonna see the full bank statements. So you do want to add something here. So classified payment or something. This is going to appear on their bank statements. So if they do buy something, you'll let them know that's, you know, it came from your websites. And I think once we're done, yeah, make sure Stripe is enabled and we'll go to the bottom and then click on save changes. Okay, cool. Now Stripe is almost integrated, right? There's one more step we have to do. So we integrated it here, but for some reason we also need to integrate it in the theme. I don't know why, but that's just the recommendation. So over here, list of a panel, I'll click on monetization. Make sure these are all checked right here and then click on save changes. And lastly, we'll go over here and click on Stripe. So make sure that you guys enable it. And then right here, we need to enter our publishable key, our secret key, and also a webhook. So let's go back. And now we're going to basically do this one more time. So I'll click on developers and then API keys. And here's the first thing you need to copy. So this is the publishable key right here. I'll go back and I'll first paste this. The next is the secret key. You can get the secret key by going over here and clicking on create a secret key. So I'll go ahead and have to verify my info really quick. Now I'll give this a name. So classified websites. You guys can tell that I did this quite a, quite a bit <laughs> before the video. Now this is our secret key. Make sure that you guys do write this down. You guys will need this later, right? So just make sure that you write this down just in case, um, you know, just for whatever, just write it down somewhere, right? Let's go back over here and then I'll paste the secret key in. And now it wants us to add in a webhook secrets. So let's go back over here. We'll click on done. And we'll go ahead and do this one more time. So we're gonna go over to webhooks. Now here's the one that we just created. So I'm gonna click on this right here and then reveal the signing secrets. And then we're also gonna paste this over here. So webhook secrets, paste it in and click on save changes. 
and that's it, we're done. So at this point, the website is now integrated with Stripe. And you guys can test this. I mean, you guys can run like a dollar transaction, right? So I'll go to visit site here and we'll then click on post ad. And I'll go ahead and just buy a package. All right, I'll buy this one right here for just $5, right? I'll, I'll spend $5, why not? And I'll actually use a live credit card. All right, so I'm gonna go find my credit card here and then we'll fill this out. Okay, so you'll see I entered in my info. I mean, a lot of this is just dummy content right here. And right away, you'll see that Stripe is enabled, right? So we can go ahead and enter in our credit card, right? So I'll go ahead and put this in. All right, so I entered in my credit card right here. And then once that's done, I'll then click on place order. And look at that. We have this beautiful checkout page right here. And once this is purchased, I'll then click on back to panel. And that's it. It takes them right back to their account page where they can go ahead and now use their bump ups or their package or whatever it is you want them to buy. And we can test this out by going over here and clicking on the home. So here's my account and you'll see that we did make $5. Here is the purchase, right? And the balance is $4.55 because they do take a small transaction fee. So that's it. We successfully integrated the Stripe payment gateway. Now let's do one more, right? So we did also have the option for PayPal. And PayPal is like really, really easy to, to do, right? So um, you, you guys saw earlier how I had the option for Stripe and also PayPal. So here is the PayPal option. And if I click on this, it'll then prompt you to go to PayPal. Now you do need to have a PayPal account in order for this to work. So you guys can go to paypal.com and you guys can just make a free account. Currently right now I'm in Thailand, so everything comes up like this, but if you guys are in America, you guys can just make a free PayPal account and then you can integrate it with your websites. So once you guys do make an account, all you gotta do is just make sure that you guys are logged in and then it'll automatically log you in and it'll sync up with your website. So uh, we'll go over here to WooCommerce, click on settings, and then we'll click on the payments. And right here we have PayPal. I'll just click on manage. All right, so all you guys need to do right here is just click on activate PayPal. This is going to log you guys into your PayPal account. So right here, I'll click on next, click on login. Then you'll just log into your PayPal accounts and click on login. And I'll click on agree and connect. And then click on back to WooCommerce. Don't refresh the page, so just let it go back to WooCommerce and just let it load. And then you'll see it is connected, right? So the good thing is, is that once this is connected, all you need to do is just make sure that, uh, you know, your PayPal account's working and all the payments will go directly into your PayPal accounts. There are some things that I do want you guys to actually uncheck. That is like something like pay later. They have a lot of upsells that are really annoying that they put on your websites like pay later button, essentially what they're doing is they're advertising like credit on your website with PayPal. And you don't really need that. So I'm going to take out the pay later button. Also right here, I don't want the pay later as well. So I'll click on save changes. All right, and that is pretty much it. So PayPal is now connected onto the website. You'll see everything looks great and fantastic. So that's how you guys can integrate payment gateways onto your website. Now the very last thing is the coupon code. Coupon codes are really cool. And if you guys do want a coupon code, I'll just show you guys how to make them. Let's go over here to dashboard. And over here, you're gonna see marketing. Let's click on coupons. So right away, you'll see I have one coupon here. This is free 50, but let's just start from scratch. So I'll click on add a coupon. And this is like Daryl 50, right? And I'm just gonna put that this is 50% off. Now there's two type of discounts. There is a fixed cart amount or a percentage discount. A percentage discount will give them a total discount of the cart. So for example, if you wanna offer them 30% off, this right here is an example of a percentage discount. If you wanna give them a dollar amount, this right here will now give them $30 off, right? So I like doing percentage because I think today most people use percentages, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the percentage discount at 30%. Here you guys can choose to allow when this coupon expires, right? I'm not gonna add an expire date, but you guys can offer that. Here we have usage restrictions. This is basically saying they need to spend a minimum of $10 for this to work and a maximum of $100. 
You can also assign this for specific products, but since we're using classifieds, we don't really have any products, right? So this wouldn't apply to us. And then for usage limits, you guys can also set a limitation. So this is the usage limit per coupon. So how many times can this coupon be used? Well, 10 times. This is how many times per item, but this doesn't apply to us because we're running a classified ad website. And then this is how many times can the same person use the coupon? I'm gonna put one and then I'll click on publish. Okay. Now, really quick, I'll change this back to 50 because the coupon is Daryl 50, right? So this coupon will give 50% off anything that people try to purchase. So let's take a look. All right, so let's scroll to the bottom here. So the bottom, you'll see the total price is $19, right? So we're gonna enter the coupon code Daryl 50 and we're gonna apply that. It was applied successfully. And if we scroll down, you'll see that the coupon is now in effect. So that's how you guys can add coupons to your website. All right, party people, at this point, the tutorial is now finished. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below and good luck on your classified ad website. All right, party people, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you guys did run into any errors, a lot of the errors are because of server issues and you, all you have to do is really just contact your host and give it the same server requirements as the theme recommends and you should be just fine. So if you guys do have any more comments or feedback, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those comments. My name is Daryl Wilson and I'll see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.